Welcome to the Full Story series. You see, here at Comic Story, and we take a lot of your favorite lore within your favorite pop culture universe, and we break them down into individual videos, giving you audio dramas that tell you brief portions of a storyline. As time goes on, we begin to add more and more videos to this longer storyline, and it becomes a giant, massive playlist, which becomes a problem for new viewers to track down the original videos. So, we eventually put them all together into this giant video so that you can just enjoy an hour long, or two hour, or three hour long movie movie of your favorite playlist. And today, we're going to be covering the Godspeed arc, the Negative Flash arc, the Flash War arc. So basically, during Flash Rebirth, this is going to cover issues 1 through 50. So you're going to get to see everything from the origin of Godspeed to the origin of Negative Flash to the Flash War, and then we're going to leave you on the cliffhanger for the next part that we've been covering more recently. Hope you guys enjoy, and let's get into the story. Barry Allen is the fastest man alive, but even being super fast doesn't help you when you don't know where to go. Because of that, he is currently waiting for word from Batman or Wally about the unknown person that currently took 10 years away from the superheroes' lives. Wally has gone off to see the Titans and figure it out from that side, while Batman is doing his own investigations. Barry would love to get on the case himself, but there is plenty to keep him busy in Central City. And this is the problem that Barry is having. With so many crimes going on, he just isn't fast enough. He knows that, so he can't stay in one place long enough to even get a thank you. He runs off to the crime scene where his friend August is waiting for him with the captain of the police force, Singh. He grabs the evidence and then he remembers that he was supposed to meet up with Iris and the other Wally West. If you're confused, there are in fact two Wally Wests at this point, both raised by Iris. Classic Wally West is currently off with the Titans, while the newer Wally West that was introduced in the New 52 is still here in the main book. Barry runs over to Jitter's Cafe only to find that he's late as always. He talks to them for a second, and then fire trucks go racing by. Wally looks up from his tablet to let Barry know that there's a fire on 4th and a Star Labs transport under attack on 22nd. Before Wally can even continue what he's saying, Barry takes off to the fire, putting on his suit. He tells himself he can do both. The fire is on the way, and he's fast enough, so he runs into the building where he grounds a woman and carries her out, and she screams, MY CHILDREN! He runs back in, dodging the flames in the crumbling building, and while this is going on, August managed to get into the path of the transport and the men who stole it. It. Members of the black hole pull their guns out on August. Flash runs out of the building with a kid in each arm. August, meanwhile, sees the black hole symbol and knows it. It was the symbol that was painted near where his brother was killed, and he wants to know who these guys are. They explained that they are black hole, and they pull the trigger. Flash knows that it's too late. He knows that he's a second off. He knows that he isn't fast enough, but he tries anyway. He hits top speeds racing down the city with the rain pouring all around him, but he's already too late. And in a millisecond behind the bullet, he hears a crack! A bolt of lightning hits August, and then Flash sees August move at super speeds, knocking out the guy that tried to shoot him. And he looks at August to see he's now a speedster. And thus, the Flash adds someone else. Someone else with powers. Someone else who is morally driven to do the right thing. The first thing that they did was test out the limits of August's new Speed Force powers because he refused to go to Star Labs and get tested there. Once they discovered that he could do everything that the Flash could do, August turned to him. Thank you for helping me, Barry. <laughs> I, I'm not Barry Allen, I'm the Flash. But August explained that Barry's secret was safe with him. He knows the Flash helps people, and he knows Barry was there for him when his brother was murdered. It's okay, he isn't gonna tell anyone. Meanwhile, while Barry is teaching his new friend, someone else is testing out their Speed Force powers in secret. Wally West gained them during the last storyline, and he's now testing out his top speeds, but he has a concern. His uncle was Daniel West, the Reverse Flash. What if he turns evil like his uncle? Barry and August head over to the office, where August begins to talk to Barry and ask him, With these powers, there's so much that we could do. Why don't we do it, Barry? We could be above the law, handling things ourselves. We could save people that deserve it. And Barry tells August, that sounds like revenge. While doing that sounds like it could be easy, it wouldn't be right. We need to do things by the book, August. And August asks him, Wouldn't you use these powers to save your mother? Which throws Barry off guard, because he tried that, breaking the timeline in the first place. Iris then calls up August to discuss the case. But while on the phone, the black hole group actually just kidnaps her right there because she's trying to report on them. August tells Barry where she is, and in a flash, he's gone. Just as Iris leaps out of the moving vehicle, Flash runs in catching her, and then he rockets 
gets off chasing the van, only to be hit by a weird speed force based beam in his chest. The crooks all leap out of the van asking Flash, did you really think you could stop us alone? And that's when August runs in. Not anymore, he doesn't. The Flash tries to tell him to stop, but August, using the tricks that he was taught, throws the Black Hole gang off their balance. Then, with their combined powers, they take out the gang and they get them arrested. Iris runs over to the new speedster to ask who he is, and after considering it and rubbing his chin, August informs her that he is the Flash's new partner. Flash thinks about it and he decides that he likes the sound of that. A partner? Things could be worse. Maybe this was the Speed Force answering the Flash's wish to be able to live a life and save people, to be in two places at once. But that's when things get a tad bit more interesting as the Speed Force storm that was around earlier giving August his powers begins to strike people all over Central City, creating dozens of speedsters everywhere. August and Flash begin to run around the city, rounding up as many of these new would-be speedsters who are trying to commit crimes up as they can. They bring them to Iron Heights, and once there, Flash explains to August his weird relationship with Eobard Thawn, the Reverse Flash. He explains how Eobard killed his mother and has been messing with his life through timeline manipulation. And August is in shock. He had no idea what Eobard had put Barry through. But as they go to leave Iron Heights, they get told about another location that new speedsters are ending up at, and that's Star Labs. The people who got their powers and didn't choose to immediately commit crimes went to Star Labs to try and learn how to control their powers. And that's where Flash meets Mina, a woman who had a boring job at Star Labs, but was always interested in the Speed Force and its applications. So, she created the Speed Force testing center for all of these new speedsters. Flash gets a little nervous, telling her that she better not be planning to use these new speedsters as lab rats, but after she runs to Keystone City and back, he sees why she wouldn't be interested in turning speedsters into lab rats. August runs back to hold down their jobs at the police station while Mina brings Flash to where he's needed. You see, some people got their powers and they went for help at Star Labs, but some people got their powers and headed out to be a criminal, and still some people couldn't control the power that they gained, and they're very scared. Mina brings Flash to see a woman named Avery who's vibrating so quickly that she can't seem to hold still, so he teaches her how to think slowly to stop it from happening, and he sees the good that he could do by teaching people. Realizing that he needs to help all of these new speedsters, Flash decides that he'll even help the criminals as he returns turns to Iron Heights with Mina to get them out of lockup, only to hear the alarm blaring. He runs over to the room and the guards tell him that his partner is already inside, and when he gets into the room with the criminal speedsters, he finds them all dead, sapped of their life force, and August on the ground. August explains that he came to check on them, but when he got here, he saw someone vibrating through the walls, and then that person sapped these kids of their speed force before throwing him to the floor. And he said his name was Godspeed. They honestly don't have much to go on, so Flash goes back to the training facility to do just that, train new speedsters. Even Avery, the woman that he helped, is beginning to learn how to control her powers, so Mina brings him into another room to explain something. She has done her research, and the people with the Speed Force, they're all connected through the Speed Force, and the Speed Force itself wants to be brought back together. It's been divided due to the Speed Force storm. So whenever two speedsters use their powers next to each other, their Speed Force will lock together, and it will recombine into one of the speedsters, the fastest one. Basically, the speedsters can race against each other, and one speedster will steal the speed out of the others. And that's how Godspeed stole the speed out of the kids. August then drops in out of uniform so that they can keep their secret identity safe, and he drops off the clues from the Godspeed crime scene. As Barry begins to flip through those reports, Iris arrives with some incredible news that she wanted to get Barry before she releases it to the public 24 hours later. Dr. Joseph Carver was a Star Labs scientist that was fired for experimenting with the Speed Force. He stole the Speed Force sample that Star Labs had, and he found a way to weaponize it. That's what the Flash was shot with, which means the Black Hole group is using the Speed Force against him. Flash runs off with Mina alongside him, leaving August back to heal in case Godspeed arrives, and they arrive at Dr. Carver's lab, which is also Black Hole's base. Flash and Mina run around disabling Dr. Carver's thugs, and the Flash grabs the doctor, asking him if he did this. Did he create the Speed Force storm? And he admits to it, telling the Flash that the storm is only the beginning. And then he activates his new device, the Speed Machine. The Speed Force begins to jump to his machine and place it into his body, but it's too much, and he begins to change into a Speed Force tornado, into something completely different, and he screams out in pain. And then using his newfound powers, he throws the Flash to the ground, and Mina runs over, helping him up, and forces informing him that he can't do this alone. He can't stop Dr. Carver by himself. And that's the moment that August runs in with some of the new Speed Force trainees, telling him that he doesn't need to work alone. August actually came here in his Speedster uniform to interrogate Dr. Carver about the death of his brother, because Dr. Carver is linked to Black Hole, and Black Hole is linked to his brother. But it's also a good thing that he brought some of these Speed Force trainees, because it looks like the Flash could use a hand. The Flash asks him 
if this is Godspeed, and August tells him that he isn't sure it was all a blur when he was knocked down. So the Flash comes up with a fast plan that requires the help of everyone as they distract him, and then they all begin to race around Dr. Carver. Using the new information that Mina has given him, Flash decides that the group can outrace Dr. Carver and draw the Speed Force out of him, and in a giant crack, that's exactly what happens. Then as Dr. Carver is on the ground in pain, the Flash smiles, realizing that he now has multiple people to help him. Having partners is something that he has missed ever since the original Wally West vanished. Meanwhile, our new Wally West is still trying to get a handle on his new Speed Force powers, and he sees an ad asking if anyone needs help learning their Speed Force, they can visit Star Labs. Flash and the crew head back to Star Labs, where the Flash realizes that he can actually do this. He can actually teach these newcomers how to control their powers, and then he can possibly get a normalish life back. And that's when Mina kisses him. So he decides to take a major leap. He doesn't want his two lives to be separate anymore. And he tells her, my real name's Barry Allen. The next day, the Flash decides that it's time to finally relax a little to enjoy his life with Mina. And he even takes some time to actually visit with Iris and have a cup of coffee with her. Wally West, on the other hand, though, has arrived at Star Labs and he really isn't sure he should be doing this. He really kind of wants to keep his Speed Force powers secret. But Mina sees him trying to walk away and after talking to him, decides to help him train away from the lab. She shows him what he can do and she even gets a chance to show him how to be a hero like the Flash. And Wally loves it. So Mina and him agree to meet back every day to continue his training. Mina then heads back to Star Labs to find the doors blown off. And inside is one man sapping the Speed Force out of everyone around him. Godspeed! She runs over trying to stop him by punching him, but he's way beyond her league. So she knocks Avery away from him and tells her to find the Flash. She turns to the other Speedster trainees and tells them that he's trying to sap their speed, so they need to run against him. They need to outrace Godspeed. But instantly, it doesn't work as he is so much faster than any of them. And Avery runs off to try and find the Flash. Flash. They need help. The Flash is running through Central City with August by his side as they discuss what Mina could mean to him when Avery shows up telling them what's going on. Godspeed is at Star Labs. The Flash is confused. They stopped the black hole. They stopped Dr. Carver. Wasn't he Godspeed? So he takes off for Star Labs where he finds a bunch of the trainees drained of their life force and Mina's suit on the ground and no Mina. Flash and August get to work trying to solve this because the Flash isn't convinced that Mina is dead. There was no body and her suit had traces of something that happened to him a long time ago. Something like a crisis. August tells him that they should not reach for straws and that they should be out there looking for Godspeed. But Barry tells him that he's looking all over the city. Godspeed isn't there. The news then reports that Godspeed just ran a man across the highway, scraping him at lightning speeds to death. He turns to everyone and asks how the news knew to call him Godspeed, and the trainees explain that they told the press. People needed to know the situation. And the Flash tells him, you're right, I'm sorry I didn't tell them sooner. So he runs over to talk to Iris about the information that she has on the black hole, and get her thoughts on the death of Mina, just as Wally comes home and overhears the discussion of the death of Mina. Barry turns and is confused as to why Wally is so upset as tears begin to stream down his eyes. He then runs out of the room and as Barry tries to stop him to understand what's going on, he then quickly discovers that Wally is gone and he begins to wonder, does Wally have powers? As he walks back into Iris' room, he decides to ask her what the latest victim's name was and Iris informs him of the individual's name. That's when it all clicks. Barry knows who Godspeed is. He takes off as the Flash and he finds August, demanding that he stop so that they could talk. And Flash explains that he was checking into Godspeed's victims. And there's one victim that didn't fit the MO. The victim was dragged to death and he didn't have any Speed Force based powers. And August smirks. Sounds like it was personal. It was Billy Parks, August. The man you suspected of murdering your brother. Tell me you didn't do this, August. <sighs> he deserved to die. Billy could have been an innocent. My gut was right, Barry. He did it. We don't know that. Yes, we did. Killing isn't justice. I took a criminal off the streets. What? Did you kill the other speedsters as well? What about Mina? You barely knew her, Barry. Excuse me? You and Mina weren't some great love affair for the ages. Don't turn Mina into another tragedy for you to make into your life story. And the Flash strikes August across the face. So he wipes the blood aside and he lets the lightning flow. You know, I was thinking of calling myself the new and approved Flash because you clearly aren't cutting it anymore. But I realized that with these powers, I am judge, jury, and executioner, so I call myself Godspeed. Then he runs off. Try to catch me, Flash! He begins to run off with the Flash in pursuit. How did you do it, August? Well, Barry, you see, I'm faster than you. So much faster that I can do what you have ever so desperately wanted. I can be in two places at the same time. And that's when a second Godspeed arrives, and with the two of them, they knock the Flash down. One of the Godspeeds grabs Barry, while the other one repeatedly pummels him until he's bloody. You have to believe me. I never wanted to kill Mina or the others. I just wanted to be fast. So I could stop anyone from ever having to experience the pain that I felt from losing someone. Think about your mother's killer sitting in Iron Heights. If someone like me was around back then, they could have saved her from Thawne. And then he screams out in pain. Aah! The Flash asks him, are you okay? 
can't believe you're still concerned about me. Keeping myself in two places for too long begins to hurt. So the Flash gets up. Good! And he sucker punches August so that he can run for it. He makes it back to Star Labs where he collapses on the floor, but Godspeed isn't done while the Flash is thinking of a plan. The Black Hole group has now taken some hostages over at the local courthouse where they demand the police listen to them. And realizing that he can do good and find out more about Black Hole and his brother's killers, Godspeed runs to the scene to vibrate two guys into the walls and take out the third before running the leader of this group to a rooftop. He begins to shake him violently at super speeds, demanding to know how some street thug named Billy Parks is connected to Black Hole. And the leader tells him, I have no idea what you're talking about. Meanwhile, Wally runs over to Star Labs looking for the Flash and he finds him doing nothing. Not aware that he's trying to recover from his last meeting with Godspeed, Wally flips out on him, telling him that he can't believe that he's standing around doing nothing while Mina's killer is running free. He'll just go find Godspeed himself and he runs out of the building. Barry catches up to him and he finds out that since the Flash is friends with his aunt Iris, that's why Wally didn't want to seek out the Flash for help. But Mina, she was helping him. And now she's gone. But he learned from the Flash that he can also help people. He needs to help people. It's his choice what he does with these powers. And the Flash is shocked. You learned that from me? But it gives him an idea. If he can go faster, he can stop Godspeed. And Mina said that the Speed Force is trying to reconnect. His theory is that the reason that the Speedsters died is because they raced against Godspeed, fighting to keep their powers. So what if they were giving them up willingly? He takes Wally with him back to Star Labs and he explains to everyone that he wants to take their speed so that he can stop Godspeed. They'll get to go back and have normal lives, but they have to willingly give it up. And it works, granting both Barry and Wally more speed than they've ever had before. And that's when Godspeed arrives, kicking everyone. If you're willing to give up your powers, you don't deserve them. The Flash chases after Godspeed, and as they exit the lab, he informs Flash, I'm gonna do you a favor, Barry. I'm going to Iron Heights to kill the man that killed your mother, Eobar Thawne, along with every other crook in Iron Heights. I'll be back in a minute, buddy. The Flash runs after him as fast as he can, and then he reaches out to August, knowing that he can use the Speed Force feedback to stop him from running. They both hit the ground in pain and August tells him, I'm shocked that you would use the speed force against a friend. He stands up and he begins to separate himself into two. And then one begins to run to Iron Heights while the other stays to prevent Barry from stomping him. Because Barry's all alone. He can't stop Godspeed until Wally jumps in. No, he's not. Barry gets back up asking Wally what he's doing and he tells him that he was thinking about his Aunt Iris and how she would never stand by while other people were in trouble. August looks at the two of them and he tells him, too bad I'm still faster. But Flash knows that he actually isn't faster. When August separates, he breaks breaks his Speed Force connection down, making him slower. Meaning, the Flash and Wally can outrace him. They begin to run circles around the two Godspeeds and they begin to sap out his Speed Force energy until CRACK! Wally then stands over the defeated Godspeed in a new Kid Flash outfit granted to him by the Speed Force. August swings at him, throwing him aside, thinking that he still has enough speed to try and finish his mission. So he gets up and he begins to sprint towards Iron Heights until the Flash grabs him and in a swift motion, knocks him out. A few days pass and August is restrained in Iron Heights where Barry comes to visit him to inform him. Billy Parks wasn't the killer of his brother. He ran the evidence, and August was wrong the whole time. August doesn't want to believe it, but Barry assures him that he'll track down the real killer, and August scoffs at that. You don't have time, Barry. You're alone again. Plus, you're going to be busy trying to figure out who's behind the black hole and that speed force storm that started all of this. Barry looks at him. It was Dr. Carver. We stopped him. No, Barry. There was someone else. Someone over him that supplied him, and I know who it is, but I'm not going to tell you. I think it'll be a nice bargaining chip that I can save for the future. Meanwhile, Wally shows his Aunt Iris his new speedster suit and begins a very long explanation. And then he tells Iris not to worry. He won't become Daniel. He has a great teacher named The Flash. While The Flash is watching over Wally's training, someone appears behind him to thank him in his ear. Someone that he really shouldn't be hearing. He turns around to see a speedster trail on the ground asking, Mina? Barry walks in to see Iris on Halloween, and he notices someone delivered flowers, and he eyeballs them. Someone gave you flowers? Wally chimes in from the back. Aunt Iris has a secret admirer. She explains that they get dropped off every week without a note. And Barry looks at them, and then jokingly states, Maybe I need to start dusting them for fingerprints. And that's when they all get called away. Wally goes on to explain that ever since the Godspeed incident, he's been training with the Flash to become a better kid Flash. He wants to be like the Flash so bad, but he feels like the Flash is just hard to talk to sometimes. Then, as they're saving people on a bridge, someone tells him, Nice suit, kid. And another Flash appears in front of him. Wally watches as this new Flash steals the speed from the explosion, saving Wally from that explosion. And then he calls out, Flash! There's another speedster from the Speed Force Storm! Barry runs over telling Wally it's fine. This is a friend of 
Memphis. And then this new Flash explains that Wally can call him Flash. But this just confuses Wally. Wait, there are two Flashes? That's confusing. You don't know the half of it, kid. To help make things not super confusing for you, the viewer, at this point, we're going to refer to New 52 Wally West as Wally. We'll refer to Barry Allen as Barry, and the original Wally West will be referred to as Flash, since he doesn't want to reveal his name yet. Barry explains to Wally that he trained this Flash a while ago, and this Flash reaches his hand out to shake Wally's. But that's when something happens, and Barry feels it in his mind. Lightning courses through him, and he screams out in pain. This has happened before! I was warned! He hits the ground on his knees, and Wally tries to reach out to him, but the feedback from the speed force throws him aside. Flash runs over. Are you okay? And Wally tells him that it burned him. Barry begins dwelling on everything. What's the point? Why do we do this? Dress up and save the lives of people who don't want to be saved? Everything we love is being taken away! He then gets up, lightning shooting off of him. Neither of you understand. My parents are taken from me, but you were both abandoned. They left you. He then turns to Wally. Your father would rather you call him uncle instead of dad. And Wally stares at him. That's right! Daniel West, the Reverse Flash, is your father. He didn't want to admit it, and that's why he became the Reverse Flash. Flash runs over telling Barry to stop right there, and Barry turns to him. You? You think you could fill my boots? I have no legacy! I'm the Flash! Do you understand me, punk? Me! He then begins to absorb into the Speed Force, and he begins to pull him in, and then he sees him. Zoom! You are destined to run alone forever! I've seen your future! But Flash has an idea. Barry saved him from the very same thing a short while ago, and he reaches into the Speed Force with the help of Wally. And then with an explosion, the Speed Force is calmed down. Barry looks at Flash and Wally and he tells them that he's sorry. They did it. They stopped the Speed Force from absorbing him. While they all should be happy about this, Wally looks at him scared. Is Uncle Daniel really my dad? Barry turns to him. Wally, I'm sorry. I found out when he was arrested. And Wally takes off confused. He knows that Barry didn't mean what he said, but could it be true? Did Daniel West become the reverse Flash because of Wally? Barry begins to try and chase after him, but the Flash tells him not to. Sometimes, you need to run it off. Later that evening, Flash gets out of costume and he catches up with Wally. They both ask each other if they know who they are, since they've only ever met in costume. And Wally tells the Flash, it's kind of easy. The red hair is a giveaway. Wally explains everything, how he used to idolize his Uncle Daniel, and why would Daniel leave him? What was wrong with him? So the Flash tells him that when he was a kid, his parents fought all the time, and when they sent him away, he felt rejected as well. He dealt with it with lessons that Barry taught him, that it's all about believing in yourself with your heart. Your powers don't matter. You aren't alone, Kid Flash, no matter what has happened in the past. Wally finally cracks a smile and asks him if he has any advice for working with Barry. So the Flash points at him. One day, you're gonna challenge the Flash to a race, and he's gonna let you win. It's who the Flash is. They both suit up and they run off as Flash tells him, we're family, Kid Flash. I'm here for you. And then, he ran to go meet with Barry. He explained that they discovered who had removed him from the timeline and that it had screwed everything up. It was the villain Abracadabra, and he fought him along with the Titans. This is a story that we will be covering shortly, so don't worry, you aren't missing that much. It hasn't concluded yet. Barry then asked him if he was the one delivering the flowers, and the Flash tells him it is him. He wants her to know that someone cares about her. Barry tries to convince him to tell Iris everything, but he tells him it isn't time. Abracadabra hit the Titans hard. Yes, he made the world forget about this version of Wally, but he isn't the one messing with the timelines and they need to solve that before he'll tell anyone anything. So the two of them suit up and they get ready to run some more. But Barry tells the Flash one thing that he saw while in the Speed Force. An odd looking helmet with a set of wings on it. He doesn't know what it was, but it filled him with hope. Where we will tell you the story of a man made of darkness, haunted by his own history, the man learned that one of the real horrors of life is that your life could be affected by the maliciousness of others. At his worst, he turned to misdeeds and mischief, but one day, he was blessed with friends and love. He found hope, and he gave up his wicked ways. And thus, the wicked man lived happily ever after, but that was a long time ago. We are now in Central City where Barry Allen and Iris West are running through the park getting in shape. Iris brings up the fact that Wally has been ditching school and would like Barry to speak to him for her. Barry pretends to be winded and asks if this is why she invited him to jog with her. And then he notices somebody playing with paper nearby and feels like something is off. That's when Papercut gets up telling everyone to empty their wallets! Before Barry can run in, Iris gets in the way telling him to be careful and Barry realizes that he can't change into the Flash with her there. He begins to wonder what he's going to do. Does he risk his identity and just save the day? 
but that's the moment that another speedster arrives on the scene. Kid Flash, aka Wally West. He runs in hitting Paper Cut and knocking him down. And then Iris demands to know why Kid Flash isn't in school. You see, no one knows Barry's identity, but Iris does know her nephew is Kid Flash. Before Wally can come up with a good excuse, Paper Cut gets up telling him that he doesn't just control paper, it's just the easiest. And then he begins to move trees around Wally. As the trees pick up Iris and Wally, Iris calls out for Barry to help them, but she can't seem to find him in the mess. That's probably because he changed into the Flash. He shows back up and makes quick work of Paper Cut saving everyone. He then turns to Wally. You wait here. I'm taking Paper Cut to Iron Heights. Flash catches up with Wally and demands to know why he lied to him. Flash and Wally had an arrangement. He would go to school and the Flash would teach him afterwards. He was never, never to go off on his own. Flash tells him that he knows that he's breaking their deal. He knows that he's been running with the Teen Titans and he shouldn't be. You're not the first partner to try and hide things from me. I thought I could trust you, Wally. And until I can, I don't think I can train you to be Kid Flash. But that takes off Wally. You talk about trust? I don't even know your name. Why does that other red-haired Flash know your name but I don't? He then storms off, leaving Flash to wonder about that one. Barry goes back to his lab where he goes over the situation and how many people he's lost. Time with his father while he was in prison. That other Wally West who's now going by the name The Flash. August who turned out to be Godspeed. And then there's Mina. Barry has been following the sightings of a speedster taking from the rich and giving to the poor. And he's certain that it's Mina. But why hasn't she reached out to him? If you're curious as to who this other speedster is, check out the first video for Flash Rebirth. Godspeed. Meanwhile, Wally heads back home where he gets himself grounded for skipping school and he heads to his room. He then decides, you know what? I'll just go catch a rogue. If I do that, the Flash will have to trust me. So after hearing reports about an evil shadow, Wally decides, how hard can a shadow be? He runs out and finds an odd man in a top hat and he offers to help him. When he turns around, Wally sees his twisted grin on his face and he informs Wally, hope was taken and without hope, life is meaningless. Then shadow creatures begin to leap out from behind the man and they begin to drag Wally down. And before he knows it, he's lost in the shadows. The next day, Barry went to speak with Wally, as Barry and not the Flash. But of course, he finds him gone. Iris assumes that she was too hard on Wally and he ran off. So she goes outside to call for the Flash and just like that, he appears. Kind of convenient because technically he was right behind her as Barry Allen in his secret identity. As the two of them try to figure out what's going on, Flash's shadow comes to life and Shade pops up telling him, Hope is lost. I need your help. He needs your help. Kid Flash in the shadows. Hearing that, Iris runs into the shadows and leaves Flash behind. Without a second thought, Flash runs for it. Really, Iris? I'm supposed to be the one running into danger. The Flash quickly realizes that he isn't near Iris and he isn't in Central City anymore. He's in Shade's shadow world. The shadow monsters begin to attack him and he tries to outrun them, but that's when Wally shows up telling him that you can't outrace them, but they hate our lightning. And with that, a massive burst of lightning shoots out of Wally and he collapses. The Flash runs over to catch him, asking if he's okay. And Wally explains that he's just exhausted. He's been here for days. And the Flash tells him it's only been a few hours. As they try to figure out what's going on, they hear Shade, the real Shade, not the twisted and demented one, talking to them. He explains that he left this life behind. He had a woman that he loved, and he was spending his life with her. But his own fears of this power overtaking him gave life to the shadows once again. He began to lose control of them as his subconscious began to guide them to do things that would supposedly help him. But it led him to losing hope losing the woman that he loved. These creatures took her away from him and brought her to the shadow world. He, of course, had to chase them, but he was overwhelmed and he needed the Flash, so he was reaching out to him. The Flash then asks him, so you aren't controlling them? Yes and no. It's my feelings of fear and doubt that are controlling them and twisting this world into an evil place. So Flash agrees to help Shade if Shade gets Kid Flash out of this mess. Even though Kid Flash argues that he wants to save Iris, Shade ends up informing both of them that it doesn't matter. No one can leave until we have regained control of the shadows. And the shadows are preoccupied with something that they are building, the Tower of Darkness. They are hoping to build it to free themselves from this world forever. Flash brings up that if they find hope, he can bring her back to Shade and they can end this. And Wally then asks, what about Iris? So Shade informs them, you misunderstand stand. I already found Hope and Iris. They've been infected by the shadows and they are now the queens of them. It's time for Flash versus Iris West. While Flash and Wally run around with Shade fighting the shadows, Hope and Iris stand in their castle. Hope says that she used to be a cop and never understood why people would go to a life of crime. But now she understands how fun it is. And Iris explains that her nephew and Flash have always been the ones with power. They worry and fret over her as if she's some weak damsel in distress. Well now, she has the power. And as they become more certain of themselves, their powers grow. And the battle outside is being lost as they control the shadows. No matter how fast they run and generate 
bright light. The darkness creeps back in at the same speed until it finally swallows up both of our speedsters. Flash tells Wally to remember what he taught him about vibrating through objects, becoming intangible. And Wally says he can't remember and he won't try. So Flash asks him, why won't you at least try to vibrate? And Wally snaps back at him. Because Mina was supposed to train me and she's gone. Flash brings Wally close to him and he freezes time, per se. He explains that he locked their speed force together, seemingly freezing time, but they are basically moving at a high speed together, so it only appears like they've frozen time. That allows them to talk for a second. I know you're upset that Mina is gone. I am too, but I need you to trust me, Kid Flash. Why can't you tell me who you are? You don't trust me. It isn't about trust. Knowing my secret identity, it's a burden. Secrets can weigh a person down. I'm protecting you. I didn't get a chance to be a kid. No friends, clubs, or band practice. I was alone. And I don't want that for you. You deserve a real childhood, and that means that some things need to be kept secret. Now trust me, I can't hold this for much longer. Wally looks at him. Can you at least give me a clue to your name? Because you look like a Chad. I was named after my grandfather. Now our frozen moment is wearing off. You need to go intangible with me or they'll tear us to shreds. Can you vibrate with me? Is this really a teachable moment, Flash? Every day is, Kid Flash. Conquering his fears while he vibrates as much as he can. And it works. And he blows the shadows back. Finally free of the shadows attacking them, they both rocket off towards the Tower of Darkness. In the tower, Hope has Shade captive, and in doing so, loses her grip on Iris just a little, so that Iris begins to question what she's doing. Hope turns back to Iris. Isn't letting go of your worries fun? But Iris starts to see the truth and tells her, just because it's easy and fun doesn't mean it's right. Your will is strong, Iris. If you reject the powers of the shadows, I will have them rip you apart. Shade can't take it anymore. Hope, no, it's me you want. I did this. The shadows, they acted out because of me. They knew that the only thing holding me back from returning to my old ways was you. Hope turns to him. It's not about you, Shade. The shadows showed me the better ways of the darkness. Seeing you like this is breaking my heart, Hope. But I guess spending an eternity with this dark version of you is my punishment! And he grabs her, using his powers against her. Wally runs in, grabbing Iris and pulling her aside, while the Flash runs over to Shade, but Shade tells him not to bother, save themselves. Flash tells Shade, not a chance, we're getting out of this together. Wally, now! Both of them begin to charge up their lightning, hitting massive levels of light and electricity. And then they do it. They fist bump. Light begins to hit the entire area, blasting the Shadow Realm away. And that's it. Everyone is now standing in Central City. Wally asks Iris how she stopped the darkness from possessing her. And Iris explains that she's just stubborn. Shade turns to Hope, explaining what happened and how sorry he is. And Hope tells him to trust in himself and her. His past will always be a part of him. But today, they have each other. Flash puts his hand on Shade's shoulder. You know, you're allowed to be happy, right, Shade? You should learn to heed your own vice, Flash. So Shade pulls out a positive shadow and uses it to teleport him and Hope back home. But as he leaves, he tells Flash, Let your lovely wife get some rest, Flash. Give her my regards. Flash, of course, is confused. Wife? We're not married, Shade. My mistake. And with a crack of light, Shade is gone. Flash just shrugs it off and everyone heads home. With everything working out, Barry heads over to see Iris the next day to ask her out on a date. Because if this timeline is going to fix itself, it's time he started talking to his potential wife, isn't it? Now the rogues consist of Captain Cold, Mirror Master, Weather Wizard, Heat Wave, Golden Glider, and Captain Boomerang. Or at least they did until Captain Boomerang left for the Suicide Squad. But the weird thing is that the rogues are currently missing from Central City. You see, they broke out of prison not long ago, and with everything going on for the Flash, he hasn't been able to find them. So many other villains in Central City, and on top of that, he had to deal with Godspeed and his new kid Flash. But as the Warden reminds Flash that the rogues are in fact missing, Flash reminds him that the rogues rogues were pardoned for their recent heroic acts. Is it possible that the rogues have hung up their weapons and quit? The Warden doesn't quite believe that, and as much as Flash wants to believe it, he decides that he should perhaps at least look into it. He begins to follow the trails as Flash and as Barry Allen, asking the various families and known associates of the rogues. His investigation led him to a woman who taught Lisa Snart how to ice skate. Lisa goes by the rogue name Golden Glider. Barry begins to speak with her, and she presents a photograph of both Leonard and Lisa Snart before they were Captain Cold and Golden Glider. In the photo, Barry saw a smiling Leonard with his father in front of the Polar Ice Building. So in a crack of lightning, he arrives at the scene as Flash, and it's there that he eventually finds the rogue's safe house in an underground lair. He does question why everyone has an underground lair and wonders if he should maybe get one, but the big thing that he notices is that the rogues aren't there, and they seem to have left in a hurry. So as he begins to gather up evidence, a countdown begins, and Barry is left with 10 seconds to get what he can and get out of the building before it explodes. But he got too greedy and was 
almost caught in the explosion. Luckily, he vibrated at just the right frequency to allow the explosion to pass through him. While this would have been the end of the investigation for many heroes, Barry moved fast enough to get all of the important information about where the rogues are. And he knows what they're doing and he knows how to stop them, even if they aren't in Central City anymore. Except this time, Barry is wrong. Because as he leaves to investigate what he thinks is going on, Captain Cold is watching with the rest of the rogues and tells them, The Flash has left. It's time. Over in Corto Maltese, there's currently a statue made out of gold and jewels. It's the statue of Mercury. And the rogues are here to steal it as they come flying in through the window. Ice is blasted on the floor as Captain Cold creates a bridge for them. And Trickster lands, putting down a box that blocks all signals exiting the building, leaving it open for Mirror Master to begin the master plan. But just as they get their glass planes around the statue, all of the rogues hear the telltale crack of a speedster arriving. They turn to see a smiling Barry Allen, upset that he made a better entrance than them. He runs right to Trickster grabbing and throwing him aside before ducking underneath Heat Wave's blast and uppercutting him. A bolt of lightning flies past him as he nearly dodges it, and he runs up to the mirrors to dodge the bolts running off of them. Golden Glider slides out of a mirror, wrapping her ribbons around the Flash, but he uses his own momentum to throw her into Weather Wizard, stopping the both of them. He then tells the rogues, it's over. But Captain Cold grabs a hostage, demanding that Flash stop and let them go. Flash smiles. You won't do it. You told me once the rogues have a code. No killing. Snart snaps at him. There's exceptions to the rule. It's fight or flight, Flash. Do you want to see how cold-blooded I can be? Not really, but there is something I do know. Snart is right-handed. And a whoosh! The Flash grabs the hostage, freeing her from Cold's grasp, and then he comes back with the full speed of a speedster, punching Captain Cold and shattering him! You're a mirror construct. You're not the real Snart. He then looks at Mirror Master. This is your doing. Where are the rogues? None of them are here. He runs over to grab Mirror Master, but Mirror Master begins to fall backwards, smirking. Bravo, Flash. You see, we needed to get you out of the city for every second possible. But that's also why we chose this museum. It has mirrors everywhere! All over the museum, Mirror Master begins to step out of his mirrors as mirror constructs of Flash, and they begin to grab the hostages. He rockets around, breaking apart the constructs of himself, but he did so so quickly that all of the mirrors cut up his fist. Then all of the shards in the mirror become a giant mirror flash, which begins to mirror his very speed. It grabs the Flash, slamming him into a giant mirror with Mirror Master taunting him. So he thinks of only one answer to this problem. Turn the mirror shards into dust. So he vibrates at the speed of 10,000 vibrations a second. All of the shards begin to turn to dust, except as he was facing off against himself, Mirror Master grabbed the statue and made a break for it before warning the Flash that the rogues were just getting started. Flash splits back to Central City to see the horrible truth. The rogues have finally won. They split it up and hit multiple locations. How can the Flash catch them if he doesn't know where to run? Standing in the crime scene of one of the heists, Iris West walks over asking Flash how he lost to the rogues. He tells her he isn't sure. He honestly doesn't even know what they stole here. She explains that she was hoping that the rogues would finally realize that the city wants them to be heroes. But sadly, it looks like they slipped right back into being villains. Flash tells her that he's given them so many chances, hoped for some good in them, but they've always proved him wrong. And that he thinks about what Iris got him thinking about. Wait, what did they steal? He counts up everything stolen and all of it was big and bold items from the statue to every jewel in a jewelry store to everything in a bank including the safety deposit boxes. It was their biggest heist ever. It was their last heist. Which means they don't ever intend on coming back to Central City and if you weren't coming home ever again, where would you go? He runs over to each of their homes and he finds Heatwave standing in front of his childhood home holding flowers. I went to their graves first Heatwave but then I remembered your old childhood home. Heatwave doesn't turn around to face the Flash, instead he slowly puts on on his helmet and he tells him, I only have one regret, Flash. That's that I didn't burn down the whole neighborhood. And with that, he begins to light up all of the houses around them, setting fires in every single home. Flash quickly runs into each building, rescuing the poor civilians, and then he comes rocketing back to face off against Heatwave, but he gets a full blast of the heat gun. He drops to the ground as Heatwave walks over. I've never burnt you this bad, Flash. After a few months of skin grass, you'll be okay. He then walks away to meet with the rest of the rogues. They're meeting on a boat offshore, and when Heatwave shows up, he tells them that he got to burn the Flash. Captain Cold knows the truth doesn't he? The Flash didn't lose the heat wave. He let himself get burnt so that he can follow him. As he tells them to get ready to roll, the Flash is instantly on the boat, taking out every rogue except for Cold. He then walks over to Cold and Cold freezes his foot in place. You see, Flash, I know the truth. The Flash always beats the rogues. So while they were stealing the money, I broke into Star Labs to steal something else. The specs for the black hole weapon that created the 
Speed Force Storm and threw you for a loop. He then pulls out a new weapon. Say hello to my black ice gun. Let's see how smart you are now. Using his new Speed Force black hole empowered ice gun, he begins to spread ice over everything, blasting the flash over and over. And he can't outrun it because it's empowered by the black hole, which is slightly empowered by the Speed Force itself. The battle is epic. And the flash asks him, why do this? You took the black hole tech and you were able to reverse engineer it into something like this? You could work four star labs. Do good for the city. You want me to work a desk jump, Flash? That's a waste of a life, buddy. I love being a rogue. Flash keeps trying to reach Captain Cold, but again and again, he blasts him with the black ice, holding him in place. And the ice combined with the black hole tech begins to literally start to tear apart the Flash. We like being rogues, just like you like being the Flash. Admit it, you don't play hero for them. You play it, because it gets your rocks off. Admit it. Using everything he has, the Flash vibrates at just the right speed, creating a heat wall around his body to keep the cold away from him. Then, super heated up, he charges forward shouting, NEVER! And he punches Captain Cold out. He then tries to dismantle the Black Ice gun, except the rest of the rogues have woken up, and the Flash is now weakened. Using the last bits of his energy, he begins to battle against them, and he turns to them all. You claim the Central City is your turf, that what you stole, you only stole while protecting the city. But look at the damage you've caused. It goes deeper than the stuff you steal. The people hide from the rogues, not out of respect, but out of fear. Golden Glider comes out of nowhere, wrapping up the weakened Flash, and she puts the Black Ice Gun to his head. You know, maybe that's what's been holding the rogues back. The whole moral code thing? We could just end this now. Captain Cold steps forward, holding his hands out, trying to talk her down. Sis, give me the gun. But she throws the tied-up Flash to the ground, hops on his back with the gun pressed to his head. How many times have we done this, Leonard? Even this time, our last heist, the Flash couldn't let us go. Everyone tried to talk her down, but they couldn't. And Lisa Snart pulled the trigger, trying to murder the Flash. Except the gun backfired, throwing her back, freeing the Flash. And in an instant, he finished off all of the rogues. When he tried to dismantle the gun, he must have caused a short circuit. And if he hadn't, he would have been dead. Captain Cold told the Flash that what he was doing was for himself, not the people. But the truth is, yes. He does it for himself, because giving the people of Central City an opportunity for justice brings a smile to the Flash's face. The fact that Cold thinks that that is selfish says more about Cold than Flash. For those of you who don't know, over the last year we were introduced to Wally West from the New 52. The man that he thought to be his uncle was actually his father, Daniel West. But to make the situation even more confusing for poor Wally, his father was the Reverse Flash. He was placed into Iron Heights just as Wally was gaining his own speed powers. He is only reminded of this when he wakes up from a dream where he came face to face with Daniel. After a brief breakfast with Barry Barry's father, Iris, and himself, Wally is obviously disturbed, not knowing anything that's going on and he runs off. Before vanishing, Daniel told Wally that he was trying to pay for his crimes as the Reverse Flash. But Barry and Iris knew that Daniel was the killer, and he wouldn't change. He told them so. So Barry decided once he changed into the Flash costume that maybe it was a good day for Wally to go and see Daniel again at Iron Heights, as no one has seen or heard from Daniel ever since Wally went there the last time. But Wally informs Flash that Daniel was actually moved to Louisiana during that whole situation where the Flash was dealing with the rogues. And Flash knows what this means. Bell Reeve. With a crack of lightning and thunder, Flash and Kid Flash make their way out there. All around the grounds in the pouring rain are dozens of guards. And if you are a Flash, and you want to get in undetected, that's perfect. With each bolt of lightning, our heroes move into the prison, and they enter deeper still. Wally notices the whole place looks like Guantanamo Bay, not a simple prison. Why would Daniel be here? He begins to panic, which causes him to run more and the guards to find him. Barry hits top speed, running around the guards in their battle suits, dismantling the suits, leaving a bunch of men in their underwear. And as more guards arrive, someone yells, STOP! With the commanding voice of a person that you don't want to cross, Barry and Wally see Amanda Waller, and she asks what is he doing there. Barry approaches her asking where Daniel West is, and she sternly tells him that they have no record of a Daniel West. Wally yells out that he has proof, and she tells him that no matter what he has, there's no one here. Also, if they don't leave right away, she'll make room for a breaking and entering speedster. Barry grabs Wally by the arm and they leave the area. Wally demands that they go back and they find Daniel, but Barry explains that he has a better idea. If Daniel was ever in Bell Reeve, then he knows someone who might have an answer. And they run off to the Australian Outback and Digger Harkness. He's gotten himself into another bar fight, except he quickly cuts apart the men trying to beat him with his razor sharp boomerangs. Then, as he's about to cut a guy's throat, there's a whoosh and the boomerang is lifted out of the air. Should have known he'd be in trouble 
Gold Digger, and the men then jump on Digger as he tells the Flash, Hey, Flasher, good to see you, mate! He begins to fight back, asking who the wee bit is. But as Barry debates if he really wants to help Digger, a net is thrown over them, and all three of them are captured for entering the Weaver Clan's web. Quickly, all three of them are tied to a post to hold them in place. Captain Boomerang asks Flash why he isn't leaving, and he explains that this Weaver's web is weird, as electricity has its own vibration. So Captain Boomerang has another plan. An offer. The leader walks over wanting to know what Boomerang could possibly have for him, and he tells him, why not sell the gun that was able to kill the Flash? The boss thinks about it, and then he sucker punches Digger. I like your idea, so the Flash will run with you. And if you don't, Flash, we'll show your little sidekick how sharp Digger's Boomerangs can really be. With a whoosh, Flash and Digger hit the ground running as they open fire with their firepower trying to hit the Flash. But while they try to shoot at the fastest man alive, Wally informs them that the webs that held the Flash in place only did so because he was trying to vibrate. But you see, when Wally tries to do that, he blows up. So he blows up the bindings holding him and he begins to drop each one of the thugs shooting at the Flash. Wally grabs a boomerang and throws it slicing through the guns and then he bounces it all over distracting the men with the guns allowing him to drop each of them. With the mess complete and the night coming upon them, our heroes and one villain stop to talk. And Wally asks the question, what happened to Daniel West? Boomerang shrugs it off. Don't know what you're talking about, kid. He's my dad. And that right there pauses Digger to stop. No lie? I just want the truth. Oh, bugger. He pulls off his hat and he tells him, here's how it went down. The Suicide Squad was sent on a mission to stop the League of Assassins outside of Turkey when it all went kind of sideways. There was a bomb that could kill a lot of kids. West decided that he couldn't let that stand and he went back to get the bomb and throw it into the ocean. He saved a lot of people, but he wasn't fast enough. That's the truth. Your old man died a hero. Sorry, kid. While he runs off and Barry turns to Digger, Digger, he. I never expected a thanks, Flash. Go after the kid. So Barry chases him back down and Wally shouts to him, You knew! You knew, didn't you? I didn't know for sure. When we went to Belle Reeve, that's what you were worried about. That he was sent on some suicide squad. And Barry tries to tell Wally to come back with him. They can talk about it at home. But Wally is confused. He's angry. He's hurt that his father couldn't just tell him the truth. That he was his father. Did he not want to be Wally's father? So Barry finally decides that it's time and he removes his cowl, telling Wally that there is nothing wrong with him. Wally's eyes light up as he finally sees the truth about the Flash's secret identity, that he is, in fact, Barry Allen. Barry explains that Eobard Thawne, his own reverse Flash, went back in time and murdered his mother. He then lets Wally take all of that in, and Wally asks him, Does Iris know? Barry explains that he keeps his identity secret for fear of his enemies finding out and harming those that he loves. Wally turns off to look into the desert. You're a liar. If you cared about Iris, you'd have told her a long time ago, Barry. Just like my dad lied to me. And then he runs off leaving Barry to think about that. Meanwhile, over in Iron Heights, there is a man, a prisoner, so dangerous that he is left in a full body suit. A suit that limits his movement, but not in a normal way. This suit doesn't allow him to move even a fraction of an angstorm, the smallest unit of measurement in the world. In this prisoner's cell, there's a crack and a boom, and lightning shoots across the cell and dances across the floor because someone has just been freed. Someone that has ruined Barry Allen's life. Someone named Eobard Thawne. With the speed force swirling around him, he smiles a sinister grin. I remember the Batman, Thomas Wayne, killed me in a flashpoint. I should teach his son a lesson. Iris West is sitting at a table taking small notes as a woman explains that Godspeed took her son from her. He did such a large amount of damage to the body that they couldn't even have an open casket. She explains that Kyle was a dumb kid. He didn't ask to gain those powers from the Speed Force storm and now his body is stolen. Iris pauses. Stolen? Yes, the cops didn't tell me anything about it, but they say that it's a part of an ongoing investigation. Iris explains that that is because that's what they say when they're worried that the facts of that case could tip off the guilty party. The woman turns to her. Do you have any kids? I take care of my nephew. If this happened to your nephew, wouldn't you want answers? Iris left the house thinking about that, and it brought her to the grave of Kyle, and then to the other surviving families. Someone's been going around stealing the bodies of the victims of Godspeed. Luckily, she knows someone who works in the CCPD. Barry Allen runs into his office to have a seat just as Iris walks in. In her hands is a cup of coffee. And then she hands it to him and he chuckles. <laughs> you know, before we were dating, you used to bring me coffee when you wanted a story. Iris smiles. It's the Godspeed victims. The bodies are missing and I was hoping to find out what the CCPD knows. Barry smiles back. I would love to help, but it seems like you know as much as the CCPD. 
Iris leans against his desk. Well, there's one person unaccounted for who you knew a bit more closely. Mina. She was murdered in the Star Lab Speed Force Training Center by Godspeed. And you two were, well, close. Barry looks away from her, so Iris jumps in quickly. Look, Barry, if I'm crossing the line here, I'm sorry. No, no, it, it's okay, Iris. Mina's body was donated to Star Labs along with her speed suit. That's what she wanted. Anything else is confidential. So Iris tells him thank you and leaves after kissing him on the forehead. This isn't the end of the investigation, though. Iris needs to go see if Mina's body is there. So, she decides to go to Star Labs secretly. But the moment that she walks into the Speed Force training facility, she sees dust, cobwebs, and everything untouched. Until someone finds her there, telling her that she isn't supposed to be in there. This makes Iris's reporter sense tingle, and she looks around the woman stopping her to see something that she never thought she'd see. Black Hole operating again out of Star Labs. And they're moving caskets around with the missing bodies. The woman tries to stop Iris, but she flips her over her shoulder and knocks her out. She then grabs the Black Hole suit and helmet as the guards walk over from hearing the noise. The doctor who came to check on her is named Dr. Husk, and he asks if she's okay, thinking that Iris is a Dr. Holt, the woman who was over here and was trying to stop Iris. Iris pretends to be her and tells him that she's fine. So he asks if she did the data wipe, because they can't have anyone accessing Mina's data. They talk about the last situation where the Flash stopped Dr. Carver, so Iris asks if they're going to go free Dr. Carver from Iron Heights. Husk tells her no, but no one really cares about the Godspeed victims, so they can run as many tests on them as they please. It's a good thing that they have a friend in Star Labs to allow for this. And Iris slips, asking, who? Husk turns over to her, looking at her mask closely. What do you mean, who? Meanwhile, outside, the Flash is in route, because he realized that if you tell Iris where the body is, she's going to investigate. So maybe the Flash should run in and see what's going on. But as the Flash arrives, a bunch of the devices launch out of the ground and into his shin, shocking him with Speed Force energy dropping him right there. Husk sees his win and he turns to Iris, thinking that she's Holt, with no time to verify that it is actually her, and he tells her, Be a deer and finish off the Flash with a black hole gun. Well, of course she doesn't shoot the Flash, as she shoots the gun at Husk, blasting his controller in his hand, the one that controls the devices in the Flash's shin. So the Flash removes them and ties up all of the black hole agents and stops Husk. He takes off allowing the police to arrive in the scene as Iris directs them where they need to be, and then he returns as Barry Allen. But the other police officers comment how it's weird that Barry even showed up. He had the night off, but here he is. Iris begins to wonder, why would Barry lie about that to her? Is there something that he's hiding? And she also wonders, who was the person helping Black Hole from Star Labs? Meanwhile, at the Black Hole's central facility, we see that person. Someone that went missing. Someone that Barry Allen assumed had to be alive because he never found a body. Mina. She's the Black Hole operative. Tale begins with a hockey game. The final minute of a match between the Gotham Blades and the Metropolis Mammoths. In an Arkham Asylum, a blonde-haired inmate starts to put something together in her mind. She cries out, panicking. They're going to kill him! She turns to her fellow inmates and she grabs her head. Stop it! Stop it! I can't stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Can't you see? Superman won't come! Our friends will die! The Legion will die! No one will stop it! No one will save us! And then we fade away from Saturn Girl. Deep in the Batcave, Batman stares at an enormous series of monitors, each with a view of the butt, and he watches the hockey game. He twirls it between his fingers as he watches the puck hit the ground, and two of the players begin to fist fight. They have a history, the announcers say. This was in the making, the audience says. But neither man is giving up ground, and they hit each other so hard that one man hits the ground and everyone begs for him to stop. The fight is over. As they pull one man off of another, Batman turns off the television and he throws the button over to the table. The one where he's been keeping the Psycho Pirate's mask ever since he got it from the man himself. The two land next to each other, and there's a slight spark, and a faint noise. Batman turns to see what's going on, and the button sends out a current of lightning that hits Batman in the chest, throwing him back. He looks up to see another Batman, a man from another time, a man from the Flashpoint event called Thomas Wayne. Thomas looks down at his son and he calls out, Bruce? And in response to that, Bruce reaches out. Father? And then Thomas Wayne fades from the vision of the Dark Knight. So he calls up a friend. Flash, something's happened with the button. Can you come over here? And Flash tells him that he's a bit caught up with about 37 samurais attacking him. So give him one minute and he'll be there. Then Batman hears the telltale crack of a speedster's lightning. 
You said one minute, Flash. Of all people, I never expected you to be early. Flash? <laughs> no! And then the reverse Flash punches Batman to the ground! Quite the reverse, actually! With 56 seconds until the Flash arrives, reverse Flash begins to talk. My name is Eobard Thawne, and I've been dead for quite some time. I should be dead for quite some more time. And then with 53 seconds left, he stomps over at the button on the ground. But a power, it awoke me. It called out to me, for me, and I am resurrected. Batman leaps at him, but he vibrates, letting Batman hit the floor. Oh, you wanna fight some more? At second 47, Reverse Flash cracks Batman with a right, and then a left, and then an uppercut. At 46 seconds remaining, he throws another left, and then a right. And then at 45 seconds remaining, he hits Batman across the face. With 44 seconds remaining, he grabs him. You're still alive? How fun! He begins to run around the Batcave, throwing Batman into the trophies and devices that he has around, until he finally comes to the letter that his father gave him from Flashpoint, with 37 seconds remaining. He tears it up with Batman calling out, NO! And then he throws it into the air like confetti. Oh, yes! And now we have 29 seconds remaining until the Flash arrives. Reverse Flash begins to vibrate, making it so that Batman can't do anything to him. And Batman tells him, There's one thing I know about speedsters. To blur, you have to be touching something on the ground. And he drives a batarang into Reverse Flash's foot, pinning him there. At 22 seconds remaining, Batman gets up for round two, punching with a right and then a left, and Reverse Flash sonic claps him into his monitors. You have to know, you can't win! Batman wipes the blood from his face. Oh, I know, but I don't need to win. I just need 11 seconds. At the 10 second mark, Reverse Flash runs in, punching Batman over and over, and Batman even manages to get a shot in himself, so Reverse Flash pins him to the ground, pummeling him, and then he lifts him up. Batman looks him in the eyes. One. And nothing happens. Huh. I guess overtime. Reverse Flash knocks Batman out and stands over him. Pathetic. He slowly walks over to the button and he picks it up and bzzz, he vanishes. He then returns moments later with a blue fire burning on him. God! He falls to his knees. I saw God! And he dies. That's when the Flash runs in apologizing for being late. He tried to save the hockey player who was beat, but he was too late. And then he looks down to see the dead Reverse Flash and an unconscious Batman. Flash gets Batman up to his bed where Alfred begins to take care of him and he begins to go over the crime scene. The reverse Flash is there as a skeleton and he's trying to figure out what happened. Eventually he realizes there's only one witness, so he goes to talk to Batman and they decide to figure out what's going on. Batman tells him that Eobard said that he saw God. Flash tells Batman that he knows Thawne's vibrations and there was something weird about them on his corpse. It's almost as if he traveled throughout space and time. How did he get back to the cave? Batman then explains that he put the button next to Psycho Pirate's mask and he saw something. A ghost of his father. They go over their notes. This all started the night that Wally West returned. Flash has also been seeing things such as Eobard Thawne and the Helmet of Mercury. The helmet apparently gave him hope. Batman asks Flash what he isn't telling him and Flash tells him that he'll update him when he gets info. Within a short amount of time, Flash has made his way up to the Justice League Watchtower. It is here that they house all of the artifacts that they've come across. He thought back to the day that Wally returned from the Speed Force, and Wally told him that there was somebody watching them. He never saw who it was, but they're out there, and they're waiting to attack. Wally said that whoever this was was more powerful than Darkseid. Flash runs over to a sheet, pulling it off, and there sits the Cosmic Treadmill. The tool that the Flash uses to travel through time. The thing that he swore that he would never use after he created the Flashpoint universe. But as he goes to get on it, Batman steps out of the shadows. This is my case too, Barry. Flash tries to tell him no, but of course, that doesn't work as Batman and the Flash get on the treadmill together. And he begins to run faster than light! All around them is a blinding white light as they begin to run through the time stream. Flash notices that things aren't right immediately. Around them are different timelines, separate from the one that they live in. Different outfits, altered histories, even timelines where individuals have died. And behind them is a time storm, which is getting closer and closer, and the Flash knows what this means. They can't get caught up in it or they won't even know where they land. He has to run faster, but he isn't fast enough as he gets hit by the storm with a full kroom. Batman and Flash go flying off of the treadmill with Batman holding onto it with a battering and the Flash zipping around trying to get back on. But the white light of time begins to close around them. It begins to swallow them up. And then the treadmill hits the ground, breaking into pieces. They both get up looking around and Batman sees that this is his cave, but different. And the Flash realizes where they are. Batman sees the gun, the gun that killed his parents. And he sees a glass case. He lowers his cowl as he looks at it. How is it here? I never recovered it. And then Batman turns to see another Batman. His father. And Thomas Wayne turns to Bruce. I did this all because of you, son. Thomas continues. Everything I did, I did because I wanted to save you. 
In the final fight, the Flash gave me hope for you and I put my faith into him that you would be saved and I would die. And the nightmare of the Flashpoint universe would end. But something put this world on life support. The nightmare didn't stop. The war continued, the fights, the floods, the deaths of millions. I was a fool to think that I could do anything to save my son. And now, my enemies come for me. Wonder Woman and Aquaman finally agreed on something and they both have sent their soldiers to put me down. I decided to take them with me. But now here you are, and this isn't real! He grabs Flash by the throat, but the Flash vibrates out of it telling him, Dr. Wayne, please listen to me. Something went wrong. It's been months since I repaired the timeline, since I left and changed it all back. But there's something that has kept this universe around and we are trying to follow its trail. How is it even possible? The Flash says, kneeling down to feel the vibrations. Flashpoint was never an alternate timeline, but an alternate history. It should no longer exist. It's being held in place like those visions that we saw on the time stream. I don't understand any of this, but I have to rebuild the cosmic treadmill. It should only take me a minute. And then Thomas Wayne looks at the stairs. We don't have a minute. Both Batmen drop their cows and they jump into battle as the Flash rebuilds the treadmill. And as they complete the fight, the entire world begins to shake. It begins to fall apart. It's being let go of, finally. Bruce turns to his father. Your letter. It was the greatest gift that anyone's ever given to me. Bruce. After I read it, I knew I would never get a chance to respond. But if I did, there was one thing that I wanted to tell you above anything else. You're a grandfather. I have a son. Flash turns to them. Batman! The treadmill's at full power without me on it! We have to go! Now! Bruce turns back to his father. Come with me, please! And Thomas turns back to him, throwing him onto the treadmill with the Flash. The universe around them begins to fade away into the time stream. Flash! You promised me that you would save my son, now do it! Thomas calls out. Bruce tries to fight against him. Barry, let me go! But Thomas looks at them as they begin to fade away into the time stream. You are my world, son. I delivered you myself, and the moment that I saw you, I know that every choice that I've ever made has been for the right reasons. Because they led to you. You're the greatest gift that this life has ever given to me. And there is more that I should have shared with you in that letter. So listen to me. Don't be Batman. Find happiness. Please don't do this. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for your mother. Be a father in the way that I never could for you. Let the Batman die with me. Bruce calls out, We can save you! And then, Kakoom! They all vanish. Thomas stares at the dust cloud where they once were. You have. He throws the trigger to the bombs in the Batcave aside and he drops his cowl. And then he turns to the white light. Wayne's never stay down. We rise! And he fades into oblivion. As Batman and Flash begin to run through the time stream again, Batman tries to convince Flash to turn around, but the Flash turns to him. There's nothing to return to. That world is gone. So Batman asks the next question. The button came to the cave. Why did it bring us to the Flashpoint universe? And behind them is the reverse Flash running past them. Coming through, Flash! How on earth did you get ahead of me? Let alone find me! Batman and the Flash are shocked, but Batman sees Thawn holding the button and he tells Flash, he's holding the button. This is before he runs off and dies. So Flash calls out, stop, stop or you'll die, Thawn. And Thawn shouts back, I know where this button comes from, Flash, and they've never faced someone like me. And he continues to barrel on into the time stream. Flash calls out, Thawne, I've seen your future. You're going to die if you keep going. My future, Barry? Like the day that you broke my neck? Or the day that you watched Batman's father slide a sword in my back? Empty threats to a living paradox. There is no future. There is no past. Then a big bolt of lightning hits between them. And as the Flash calls out to Thawne again, he feels another force. Barry, I'm here. Batman asks him, did you hear that? And Flash tells him, it's nothing. It's the time stream calling out to you. Thawne turns back to the two of them. I have an idea, Barry. Once I have this power, I'll go back and make you my son. I'll become a social worker and raise you. Make you my acolyte. And at that moment, the treadmill begins to fall apart and fall to pieces. Batman tells Flash, we need to land somewhere, Barry. And the Flash tells him, I have to catch Thawne. And Thawne gives the grin of the psychotic reverse Flash. Like always, you're too late, Barry. I'm here. Your life is about to be undone. He arrives alone in open space with nothing but the ground and the person in front of him waiting. He looks down at the button, pulsing with power. Hello, you don't have to be shy now. I can feel your presence, like a wave of static electricity. It's powerful. I'll admit to the fact that I've never encountered anything quite like this. You've done such strange things to the timeline, things that I won't begin to question, and you've remained hidden from all of them, but I'm not like them. My existence is the only constant in a sea of possibilities. I cannot be erased by anyone, by you. SHOW YOURSELF! Thawne looks up, and he sees the blue light. And it begins to swirl around him, and he realizes his mistake. My god, wait, wait, I didn't know! The blue light touches him, and it begins to pull him apart at the seams. Please, I don't want to die! But before he can even finish his sentence, he's pulled apart and turned into the skeleton from the start of our story. 
Meanwhile, Batman and Flash hear the scream from Thawne, and they're tumbling through the time stream. But Flash hears another voice. Barry, I'm here. Flash and Batman begin to fall out of time and space itself. Flash grabs onto the treadmill for his life, and Batman is clinging on, hoping that the Flash has the answer. And both of them hear that voice again. Barry. Batman looks at him. Barry, listen to that voice. Grab onto it. Bruce, we don't know where it'll take us. We don't have a choice. The voice calls out again. Right here. Say my name. Say J. Flash is confused. J? And crack boom! A speedster's lightning flies through the time stream as Jay Garrick arrives on the scene. At last, I'm free! He leaps in front of both of our heroes, grabbing them, trying to run them through the time stream. He screams out as the time and space streams around him are trying to absorb him, Flash, and Batman. And when he finally gets his footing, he's off! Hang on! Hang on! Power enough to get you! And then he throws them out of the time stream. Home! Cracoon! The echoes of a speedster's lightning ring throughout the Batcave as Batman and Flash have arrived. Flash turns to Jay and asks him, Who are you? Did you kill Thon? What do you want with us? Jay struggles because like Wally, the speed force is pulling at him, trying to return him back to where it was hiding him. I didn't kill anyone, Barry. He stands with smoke and lightning flowing off of him. My name is Jay Garrick. I'm your friend, a Flash. Listen to me. I need you to remember. If you remember me like you did Wally, Barry thinks hard, and a sad look begins to grow on his face. He told me I forget things. People. Someone did this. Do you know who it was? And then the time stream begins to reabsorb Jay. They took everything from me, Barry. I don't know how, and I don't know why. Barry reaches his arm out. What is your name? What was it again? And then Krakoom! A giant bolt of blue lightning reaches out and grabs Jay, removing him from the timeline again. Smoke swirls on the floor of the Batcave, and the Flash helps Batman up. The man said that he knew me, the same way that Wally did, but he's not here. Maybe he's from another timeline. Maybe, or maybe I wasn't the lightning rod that he needed to stay grounded. The next day, Bruce and Barry stand in front of the grave of Thomas and Martha Wayne. Barry asks him, I wonder if all of this was Thawne's doing. Time rupturing, changing, people fading in and out of reality, like your father and that other Flash. He died. But maybe his death is what triggered all of this. Maybe there's no one else to chase. I appreciate you trying to close the case, Barry but it's far from closed. So what, our primary suspect is God? For now, that's all we have. The two of them walk away from this, for now. And off in space, something with blue light is watching over the planet. But back in Wayne Manor, Bruce is looking out the window, thinking about what his father told him. Don't be Batman, find happiness. The bat signal shines in the sky, and he remembers the next words. Let Batman die with me. Alfred walks over to see Bruce looking into the sky at the signal. Sir, aren't you going to answer that? Bruce looks, and then he hangs his head low. And out in a time and place unknown to us, the button is sitting on the ground as the blue light draws closer to it. And we see the blue hand of Dr. Manhattan reach down and pick it up. Why does my perception of time distress you? Everything is preordained, even my responses. We're all puppets, Lori. I'm just a puppet. You can see the strings. Welcome to the 25th century and the Flash Museum. Around you is the museum featuring many of the Flash's enemies and friends on display for the world to see. On the left, you'll see Godspeed's uniform, and then Kid Flash's, and then multiple Flash suits, along with a montage of the Justice League and the Flash. Normally, the museum is full of Flash's adoring fans, those who yearn to know the Flash in a way that we do. But I felt like you, you deserved a private tour. And for our first history lesson, let me tell you about a man that I know quite well. Eobar Thon, the Reverse Flash, Professor Zoom. He was many things to many people, but to the Flash, he was his ally, his partner, his best friend. And this is his story. Back in our current day, Barry Allen stands over the body of the Reverse Flash. Recently, Barry went on a time-traveling adventure with Batman to discover the mastermind behind all of the DC Rebirth timeline stuff. They failed to find the culprit, but in their adventure, Reverse Flash was murdered. We'll link that story down below. And in front of him, Barry is trying to figure out what happened. How did the Reverse Flash die? The doctors walk into the room and Barry walks out. But there's something funny about the Reverse Flash. You see, he's time traveled so much that he is a living paradox. To actually kill him, well, it's near impossible. And that's when a spark of life begins to form in his eye socket. But for Barry, he's been so absorbed that he's missing a key moment of his life. His birthday. And 
and as Iris drags him to all of his friends, they shout, Happy Birthday! Everyone is cheering for Barry, but he can't help but think about everything that is going on. He traveled through time with Batman, and it wasn't exactly just an excellent adventure. There was so much more happening. Like the appearance of another speedster, one that seemingly saved Barry and Bruce. The man with a weird tin helmet, and he knew Barry, but Barry couldn't think of his name. Whoever he was, he had been removed from the timeline. Or Thomas Wayne's final words to Bruce, where he told him to give up being Batman. Those words now haunt Bruce. Barry looks over at Wally and sees that he's still ignoring him because before all of this, he told Wally his identity. But Wally was mad that Barry hadn't told Iris. Barry then glances at Iris and he thinks about it. He told himself that he wouldn't tell her to keep her safe. That's not really the reason. She's the greatest woman that he knows and he didn't want to lose her. He then pictures Reverse Flash coming in. Lose her to Thawne. Eobard is faster than both Flash and Kid Flash, and in a blink of an eye, Barry would be powerless to watch as Reverse Flash murdered everyone that he knows. But then he snaps out of it. As his fear of losing everyone, what is keeping him from telling Iris everything? Everyone continues talking about new houses, new lives, new jobs. The world is moving around Barry faster than he even realizes, and he seems lost in his own thoughts. Iris walks over smiling at him. Don't go doing one of your disappearing acts, Barry Allen. And then... Something unexpected happens. Hal Jordan walks over. Looks like I'm right on time, he smiles at his oldest friend. He hands Barry a box with a plane in it, and Barry tells him, Great gift. I loved it when I gave it to you two years ago, Hal. Hal looks around apologetic. Well, I haven't been home in a while. Are you sure you gave that to me? It's been too long, Hal. It's just good to see you. Hal Jordan left the planet a long time ago to go on a crazy space adventure saving the entire galaxy, and I'll link that entire playlist to you down below. Hal smiles at Iris as she walks over. And who is this lovely lady, Barry? So Barry introduces his girlfriend, Iris West. But she pulls Barry aside for a moment after shaking Hal's hand. She looks at him. You aren't off the hook because of Flyboy there. Where are you, Barry? We're all here for you, and you aren't here. Barry tries to talk his way out of it, but Iris goes on. Look, I know you're hiding something. Why don't you just rip the band-aid off and fess up? Barry's surprised. What? What do you mean? Just then, people come running by shouting for everyone to get out of there, run away! And Barry sees one of his villains, Danton Black, aka Multiplex. He tells Iris to go and he looks at his oldest friend. Let's suit up. He runs past Wally telling him to get Iris out of there and then he runs towards Multiplex with Hal as the red and the green wrap around them. Because Flash and Green Lantern are here! Multiplex is surrounding a woman with his multiple clones of himself, his power, telling her that she needs to come back to him. She belongs to him! And Flash runs in with the Green Lantern cracking a joke. Sounds like you're not the only one with relationship problems, Flash. Was it that obvious? They save everyone and knock out the clones before running over to see an army of more arriving. Hal looks at him. Think you're fast enough to grab the girl while I clear a path? And as Hal bulldozes all of the multiplexes, he tells him, Here I thought your party would be dull. And Flash grabs the woman. This reminds Flash why things don't work for him. People like multiplex, they don't stop. They go after the people that Barry loves, his friends, his family. And even when those stalkers aren't present, they make it so that every moment of your life is about them. Attacking even when you least expect it. Thawne went after Batman and he nearly killed him. And Barry begins to think about how he'll never forget seeing Bruce's broken body on the cave floor. What if Thawne were to attack Hal like that? But while Flash is lost in his own head again, Hal begins to shout, Barry! Barry! And Flash looks over to see a literal wave of multiplexes coming at them. But while the Flash and the Green Lantern are trying to resolve this, Wally West carries Iris back to their house. As they walk in, Wally decides that it's time to tell Iris about Daniel. Iris tells him that she knows that he's worried about becoming that monster. But when he was the reverse Flash, and another voice stops her there. Actually, I hate to quibble, but that's when we see Eobard Thawn sitting on the couch. There's only one reverse Flash. Back at the park, Multiplex is spawning more and more duplicates to lose Hal and Flash in the crowd. But back with Iris. Reverse Flash sees Iris telling her, It's so good to see you, young and full of life, Miss West. Wally shouts for her to run for it, and in an instant, Eobard is standing in the doorway. You know, in my time, I was an expert at all things Flash. But for some reason, all of that has changed. Wally hurls a speedster lightning bolt at Thon, but he bats it away while yawning. You know, I've raced against all of the Flash's protégés. But you, young Wallace West, you are new. A clear example of the Flash's history being altered. I was hoping that you could help me fill in some of the blanks. Eobard runs around, throwing Wally and Iris into the air, and as Iris grabs for her phone, he smashes that as well. Wally suits up. How about the kid Flash kicks your butt? And Eobard looks at him. There he is. Tell me something, what kind of kid Flash are you? Are you impulsive? Or the kind that'll live in the Flash's shadow forever? 
While this is going on, Flash runs so quick that he brings everything down to speedster time, allowing him to see the minor movements of everyone to find Multiplex, slowing everything down. But while he did that for that reason, Reverse Flash did it to beat the tar out of Kid Flash, making him regret fighting him within seconds. In that slowed down time state, Flash notices Multiplex looking around at all of them, looking for something. And he realizes that's the main one. He's looking for the girl. But back with Kid Flash and Reverse Flash, Eobard catches Kid Flash's fist with a boom! And then he throws Kid Flash, stomping on his leg, breaking it. You aren't even the real Wallace West! Back in the park, Hal sees Flash grab the main multiplex and they've won again. But back in the house, Eobard stomps on Wally's leg again. You see, right now the Speed Force is trying to heal your leg. But while it's reforming her bone and your muscles, lo and habit of I broke it again. Iris gets up running towards Eobard, trying her best to hit him, drop him, stop him somehow. I'm surprised by you, Miss West. After everything your father and brother put you through, how could you let a man like the Flash into your home? And she asks him, what are you talking about? So he grabs her by the wrist. Oh, you don't know. Well, well, that's an interesting twist. Back in the park, Flash and Hal are sitting above everyone on a construct bar. So Barry can tell Hal everything. Barry isn't sure what to do and Hal tells him, life is short. Don't hold back. They say their farewells and Hal goes back into space to continue on his space adventures. Barry runs back to the West household determined to do the right thing finally because life is short or it can be long, but every second is a gift. He walks up to the door to find it ajar and already he's unsettled by that. He walks in to find the place torn apart and Kid Flash on the ground groaning. He sees Barry and he tells him, the Speed Force is trying to heal me but something is wrong. And Barry asks, where is Iris? Wally points at the wall. Thawne, he left you a message. Barry looks up to see, you know where I live. In the far-flung future, Reverse Flash carries Iris there, and he murders someone before her eyes. She tries to run, but he cuts her off. I have to give you a gift. The gift of remembering a past life. One where I murdered you. Who is the Flash? For centuries, people saw the Flash as a hero. He was their savior. They idolized him. He was deeper than worship. They felt as if he was one of them. They thought he understood them. It's funny, isn't it? How you can watch someone from afar and think you know them? The truth is, only we really know the man behind the mask. And right now, that man is giving everything that he has. Eobar Thawne, aka the Reverse Flash, has arrived in the present day, kidnapping Iris West, and he has run her into the far-flung future. The Flash is now in his cosmic treadmill trying to catch up. But as he is running faster than ever, he begins to think back to when he met Eobard. He ran into the 25th century once before, and as he entered the future, amazed by it, next to him was an individual in his own costume. He reached out, shaking the Flash's hand, and then he removed his cowl to reveal his true face. He explains that his name is Eobard Thawne, and he's a huge fan of the Flash. He harnessed the residual traces of the Speed Force from one of the old suits the Flash wore to gain power similar to the Flash. Barry removes his cowl and he smiles. A future Flash? I never thought I'd see that. Well, friend, want me to teach you some tricks of the trade? They both suited back up and they began to run, with Barry telling Eobard that he can call him Barry Allen. But Barry quickly discovered that Eobard wasn't a hero. He was putting people into danger so that he could appear to be the hero. Barry beat Eobard, and as Eobard was trying to tell him that he can fix this, that he can become the hero that Barry thought that he was, Barry had him locked up. The next time that they met, Eobard was in the yellow suit of the Reverse Flash, and he took the name as well. His goal was to make the Flash's life a living hell. He did this by going back in time and killing Barry's mother. Barry went back in time to correct it, but that made the Flashpoint timeline, and then Thawne arrived again and again to fight against Barry. And now, Barry has arrived in the future once again, but this time, this particular time to the future, something is wrong. The future has changed. It is darker, more dystopian. The civilians run in fear of the Flash, and the police officer pulls a gun, calling for backup at the Flash Museum. Barry looks around and he realizes that he's at his own memorial. And with a whoosh, he runs into the museum and he looks around. His entire life is before his eyes. Suits of Godspeed, Kid Flash, multiple Flash suits, and at the end of the hallway, he sees the Reverse Flash suit. Iris calls out for the Flash to watch out and then crack on the left, crack on the right, thunk in his gut. And the Flash hits the ground as there's a twisted, demented voice. Hello! He looks up to see Eobard Thawne without his suit. 
Welcome to my home. I wanted you to see my masterpiece. Flash gets up and in a whoosh, he runs at Eobard who easily sidesteps him. You see, after my little run-in with death, I came home. And I found that I was no longer an expert on all things Flash. So I decided to go back in time and see what else had changed within your timeline. The first thing that I found was your new sidekick, Kid Flash. And that's when I discovered that Aunt Iris, just like me, had her history altered. Iris looks at Eobard. She doesn't remember anymore, does she? Flash gets back up, running over to help her, but Eobard catches him, throwing him to the side. It's time that I started with the truth, Flash. While this might be your future, it was my present. A prison where I felt like a man out of time. I was an only child and I lost my parents to a tragic accident, leaving me with no friends, no family, no love. But I had the Flash. I watched every video on you. I studied every single story. In my darkest moments, I was thankful to have you running in my head. Then there was a miracle. A time capsule from the 21st century. The costume wasn't a replica, but it had been yours. And now, it could be mine. But dressing like you wasn't enough. I wanted to be a hero, just like you. But in this future, there weren't many opportunities, so I created my own, and I became the fastest man of the 25th century. Then you arrived, and you showed me things that I never thought were possible. You told me every second was a gift. It was the happiest day of my life. My connection to the Flash, my special moment. You didn't approve of my methods, and you sent me to prison. I told you I would make myself better. I would improve, and I did that. I dedicated my life to helping others, and eventually I became the curator of this museum. So I knew that the next thing that I needed to do was show you how much I've improved. I changed my costume to yellow because I was arrogant to think that I could wear yours, and yellow was the color that all of your partners wore. I then hopped on the cosmic treadmill and I ran back in time. I watched you nervously, but I knew, I just knew it. You'd accept me again. You're more than just a hero. You're a friend. And then I saw you with that Wally West. And you told him, every second is a gift. That was our moment. But it wasn't, was it? It wasn't special at all. It wasn't real. None of it was. You weren't who I thought you were. You were a liar. I ran back to the future with a new goal. My mission was to make you live the pain that I did. But you don't remember any of that, do you? And then Eobard hits him across the face. Do you? All of this, all the deaths, the years of torment, for that? I was treating you like everyone else in your life. I would give you credit for that. You did treat me the same. You hurt me like you hurt everyone else, Flash. It's time for you to learn, to make time for the people who matter. It's time for you. And Eobard begins to suit up as he grabs the Flash by the leg. He drags him across the ground, across the water, across the museum as he suits up telling him, Every second is a gift. He then stops over the Flash telling him, The real punishment here would be if everyone knew you as I know you. And he grabs the Flash, pressing him against the cell that has Iris in it. Iris and West, it is my honor, no, my pleasure, to introduce you to. And Eobard tears off the Flash's mask. Barry Allen. Off. In another future, we see a potential life for Barry Allen and Iris West. One where they have two kids, and those kids are not happy. They feel neglected and forgotten, and in response, they've destroyed the city. The entire city is crumbling and destroyed by Barry's battle with his children. And in the distance, Eobard is standing with Barry and Iris looking at what they've created. Eobard explains that Dawn and Don should have been heroes, but due to their absentee father, they became rogues instead. When I returned to the 25th century, I discovered a few new bits to the Flash's history. It was like finding new chapters to my favorite book. Just one of the many stories inside of this museum. Barry looks at Thawne. You must have done this. This is your fault. And Thawne walks back off the history platform that they were standing on in the Flash Museum, the one that was allowing them to relive the events of the past. Time doesn't care if you believe me or not, Barry. The reality is, I'm not Barry Allen's greatest enemy, the Flash is. Think about it. For years, you've been in conflict with yourself. The Flash always took priority in the battle over the Flash versus Barry Allen. The CSI. The friend. The lover. Why should it be any different when it came to Barry Allen, the father? Their first steps. Their first words. Birthday parties. What did Barry Allen miss so that the Flash could save the day? While Thawne was burying this into Barry's mind, Iris turns her back, telling him, You lied to me, Barry. Barry tries to tell her. Try to explain. 
and she stops him. I know your reasons. You wanted to protect me, right? All of those dates you missed? Wally? Now I get it. You're the Flash. You're in the Justice League, and I'm just Iris West, aren't I? Barry comes over. I was gonna tell you! And Thon chimes in again. Ah, no, 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 no! Barry, in all of the timelines, you never tell Iris. She finds out herself. You are always the liar. Now, if you want to save everything, run side by side with me to a place where you'll never hurt another soul again. You'll take Iris home and leave my family out of this? On my life! I promise, Barry! And with that, Thawne grabs Barry and in a whoosh, they are off, leaving Iris trying to finish a sentence. I didn't want. We could have found another way. Together. They run faster and faster, and Flash asks Thawne, Where are we going? Another timeline? And Thawne explains, That is not the case. I am taking you to a place of my own creation. A world you'll never escape. The negative speed force. You'll be forever alone, absorbed into the energy that powers my every action. And as he throws Barry into it, he tells him, And then Iris West's future will be over. Surrounded by the negative speed force, Barry calls out, You promised! And the negative energy begins to swarm around Barry, take over his body, enter his own speed force. The loss of Mina. Wally being upset, calling him a liar. Iris realizing that he lied to her. He should have said goodbye. There was so much to accomplish still. This can't be the end! And back at the museum, as Thawne is approaching Iris to kill her, there is a crack a -ca goom Eobard looks up and he sees the most beautiful thing in the world. Negative Flash. Now covered in gray skin and black gloves with boots and a black lightning bolt on his chest, Barry looks at Eobard. I'm going to kill you, Thawne. As Flash belts Thawne into the statues in the museum, Thawne comments that he loves the new Flash. Flash continues punching Thawne over and over, throwing him through the wall, and then they begin to do circles around the world, punching back and forth. Thawne plays at Barry to join him, be his partner, be my friend, ditch the sidekicks. They lap around the world repeatedly over and over, wrapping up in a speed force ball of yarn. And the Flash grabs the back of Thawne's head and he pulls him close. We are not friends. And then whoosh, zack! The Flash begins to run faster and faster, hitting new speed of insanity and he runs so fast that he pushes it on through the time stream and they land at the beginning of the world. Black lightning begins to jump off of the Flash as Thawne looks at him. Barry, we've done this before. We've thrown ourselves into the past. But the Flash is done playing. Shut up! I'm gonna stab your neck, Thawne! Thawne gets up grabbing the sides of Barry's head, sending the negative speed force flowing through his mind as he tells him. The way you're talking years ago would have broken my heart. But now it just warms it up. It's hard to imagine. I was so mad that you forgot me, Thawne. Barry then leaps into the air, grabbing Thawne by the wrist and holding them up. Do you really want to know why I don't remember all of our history? It isn't because of some big cosmic occurrence or a change in my timeline. It's because you were forgettable. They run back into the time machine, running all the way back to the 20th century, and Barry slams Thawne into the computers, grabbing him, demanding to know, Why do you keep invading my life? And Thawne, with a legitimate pain in his eyes, looks up at Barry to tell him the truth. Cuz... It's the only time that you'll spend with me. Barry angrily looks at him. You are so pathetic. That's why you've tried to ruin my future. Why you've ruined my past. He then begins to run circles around Thawne. You murdered my mother. And with that, he hits Thawne so hard that he knocks him out of his own speed force and onto the ground. He lands on his feet grinning. And I'll do it again. Now it's time for Iris. Thawne looks at her and he begins to run right at her. And as he falls to his side, he realizes that he no longer has the speed force inside of him. Barry took it away. Shocked, he looks down, holding his shin. My, my, my speed. And Barry tells him it's gone. I tore it from your body. Just face it, Thon. You're just a sad little nobody that wanted to be me. But no one ever built an Eobard Thon museum. You and I, this thing, it's over. Thon smiles. You think this is the end? You think killing your mother was the worst thing that i do to you? Years from now, you're going to look back and wish that I killed you instead. I've lost my powers before and I'll get them back again. And then I'll just keep coming back over and over and over again and again and again. And that's when Iris blasts him with the black hole gun that was being kept in the museum. It literally tears Eobard apart, revealing his body, muscle, bone, everything, warping him away into a flash lightning bolt. Barry turns back to Iris. What did you do? And she holds the gun up at the terrifying sight of the negative flash, so he lets the powers drain out of him as he pulls the cowl off. Iris, this is all my fault for lying to you, for putting you in this position, but I'm telling you, it's me. It's me, Barry Allen. I'll explain everything. I promise, Iris, we can fix the future together. He reaches out to her, and the negative speed force sparks a zap between them. So she reels back in fear and disgust, telling him, just take me home. Back at home, they both went to Wally's bedside as Eobard had torn him up in her last story. And Iris asks Barry outright, Is there anything else that you lied to me about? 
He thinks back to this Wally West in the old timeline Wally West, the redhead, the original nephew, and how this version really isn't her nephew, but a byproduct of a new timeline. He doesn't tell her the truth though, and he walks away. As Barry walks off, he thinks to himself how messed up his life has become. And that's when we get a glimpse of the journal of Eobar Thawne before he went insane, when he was still looking for a hopeful and bright future. You know, it's a shame. I doubt I'll ever meet the Flash and tell him how I feel about him, what he truly means to me. That even though I have known in my life, his sense of hope was a light in the darkness of the future. As long as I have that, as I have his hope to guide me, I'll never be alone. While the firefighters started to put the fire out in the evidence room, Singh asks Barry if he knows just how important that was to the lab. Burns and Morrow, other individuals investigating the internal affairs situation and the missing evidence, warned him about going to the records room alone, but he still went anyway. And as Singh continues to yell at Barry, Barry gets up and he walks out. Singh runs out of his office shouting, yeah, do what you always do. Disappear when you're needed, Barry Allen. How did Iris put up with this for so long? Barry stops and he looks at him, what? He turns around yelling, I am so sick of your tough love crap. I've bailed you and this crime lab out so many times. Before I came here, your lab was a joke. If it wasn't for me, the streets would still be crawling with criminals. Forrest walks up telling him, hey now, all of us put in long hours just like you. None of the people here deserve what you're telling them. And Barry yells at him, oh, if it isn't the crime lab mascot just sitting there not contributing to the lab. Singh shouts, I'm giving you one last chance to fix this, Barry. And Barry tells him, don't worry. If you're unhappy with my work, go ahead and fire me already. As he walks out, he thinks to himself that he didn't want to snap like that. He just keeps getting madder and madder. This has to be the negative speed force inside of him, dwelling, building up, just making him so angry. A little while later at Barry's office, Kristen walks in telling him, that was fun. Look, a few years ago, my parents died in a car accident. After the funeral, my sister and I stopped talking. But when my friends caught up to me, I was acting out, and I told everyone that I was fine. And then, there was a call from the station, and I had to go identify my sister's body. Barry remains quiet, and Kristen says, After all of that, I started paying attention to the unsaid things going on. So whatever you're going through, it's okay. And Barry tells her that it's not. He's not okay. Kristen stops him, telling him, Don't hide. Don't push people away. You're not alone. We're all your friends here. We can all work with you, okay? Later, Barry and Kristen look at the reports, and Barry says that someone has been stealing the blood samples, and Kristen tells him that's right. After speaking with the guards, they said that they were feeling like they were having a heart attack, so they didn't see who had started the fire. Barry flips through the report saying that if they wanted to dispose of the blood, they would need to go where it wouldn't stand out, a place where you wouldn't think twice if you saw the blood. Barry thinks of the only place that this would be normal, the morgue. While Kristen was still putting this together, Barry takes a chance to run out of the room, and Kristen shouts, Really? Moments later, down on the morgue, Barry tells Ramsey that he won't let him destroy those blood samples. So put the evidence down, no one has to get hurt. Ramsey says, Someone always gets hurt. And then suddenly, Barry starts to shout in pain. He asks, What are you doing to me? And Ramsey says, I could do this job forever. But when you're a coroner, you start to see that it's all just a fantasy. Every body that I cut into in the name of justice makes me painfully aware of how vulnerable life really is. He then takes a scalpel and he presses it against his skin, not cutting it though. And he says, now I'm in a vulnerable, never to bleed again. Ramsey then explains, growing up, I found out that I was a hemophiliac. The smallest cut could be a death sentence. So I needed to find a cure. And with my training as a coroner mixed with my medical understanding of my condition, it made me an expert in blood and how it works. A lot of criminals come into here, some being metahumans. So when people started to find out that someone was taking samples, I needed to protect myself. Ramsey kneels down telling him, you know what? It was worth it. I'm beyond cured. However, there were some unforeseen side effects like being able to control blood and make it burn. Barry struggles, telling him, stop! And Ramsey says, if you know about me, the cops must know too. So I might as well go out with a bang and kill you and everyone at the CCPD. Hearing those words jolts Barry out of his pain and he screams, no! And a black lightning bolt shoots out into Ramsey, throwing him outside of the building. As Ramsey's body crashes into the ground, people begin to shout, it was the Flash, he just killed that man. Barry walks out of the hole, no, I didn't mean to. I think it's all because of the negative speed force. No better than Thawne. Then Ramsey shouts, All I wanted to do was to protect myself, and instead, you just jeopardized it. Now I need a cool name. Flash walks up to him, telling him, You're not a criminal. 
And Ramsey shouts back, get back! As he goes, blood begins to grow out of him and it smacks into Barry and he yells, the Flash is an infection inside of Central City and I'm the antibody. Barry tries to fight back against the blood and Ramsey tells him, I won't be one of your victims. Blood work will make you the victim now. As Barry looks, he sees Ramsey now covered in veins, letting his blood flow. There's no more skin, just muscle, fiber, and blood. As the blood begins to spread, it grabs into the nearby people, and every movement that Barry makes destroys the veins, and more blood appears. While Barry tries to figure out a plan, Ramsey shouts, This is all your fault! All I wanted to do was to protect myself! And Ramsey throws out more veins, and as they get close, Barry releases a shock, popping them. Barry yells, I don't want to fight you! And Ramsey begins to mutate, asking, Then why do you keep attacking? Why can't you just let me go free? Barry tells him, Because that wouldn't be justice. You've hurt people! And Ramsey spreads more veins out yelling, and I will kill every single person in the city if it means that no one will hurt me again. As the veins spread outwards, going into a spider formation, Ramsey shouts, you don't know me. What could a superhero like you know about pain? Barry notices the more that Ramsey gets upset, the quicker his blood flows. So he has to try something. Barry runs back telling Ramsey, look, we're more alike than you think. Right now, I've let all of the negativity in my life just build up until it exploded. I've lied to so many people, people who have trusted me, all because I thought it would protect them, but that was wrong. My lies have led to people getting hurt, and ever since then, I've been pushing people away because I don't want anyone to go through that. I'm not the hero that people think I am, so please, believe me when I say I know exactly what you're going through. Blood starts to wrap around Barry, and Ramsey asks, Why should I trust you? And Barry looks at the ground, telling him, just think about what I just said. I refuse to believe that you would wish to hurt anyone else. Ramsey pulls the Flash closer, asking, How do we fix this? And the Flash tells him, We do it together. I'll do whatever it takes to help you. Ramsey's body begins to revert back to its previous form, and he asks, Really? And the Flash says, Yes, after I stop you. The Flash grabs onto Ramsey's face, and suddenly there's a crack a boom And a lightning strikes down, frying Ramsey. Ramsey is completely reverted to his human form, and he asks, what did you just do? The Flash lets the lightning strike down onto his veins, telling Ramsey, I'm sorry, it was the only way, but I promise I will help you. Ramsey falls to his knees, his nervous system shocked to the point of stopping his blood from flowing, and soon came the end of blood work. Later, as Ramsey is brought into the station, Barry tells him, We know you stole those samples. And Ramsey grins, telling him, Well, where's your evidence? Barry asks, What? And Ramsey tells him, The Flash just destroyed the morgue when he fought that monster. I was just an innocent bystander in that battle, caught up in whatever the Flash was up to. Sting walks out telling him, actually, he's right. Without any evidence to prove it, Barry, we have to let him go. As Ramsey dangles his hands, he says, thank you. Now would you kindly remove these cuffs? Before they can, Kristen runs up telling everyone to wait. Ramsey isn't as smart as he thinks. After some digging, he did burn all of the hard copies, but he left a digital fingerprint all over the records, which is more than enough for arrest. Sing takes the report and asks, so, did Barry help? And she tells him, yeah. Team effort, Barry Allen was here the whole time. Barry steps up telling them, no, it wasn't. I'm not going to let you cover for me anymore. I left just as we were cracking the case. It was Kristen who solved it on her own. Sing flips through the pages and then points to his office telling both Barry and Kristen to get into it. Barry says, look, I know I messed up, but from this day forward, I'm going to do better. I'm going to work harder, Sing. Sing sighs. Actually, we can't keep doing this. I had to transfer you out to Iron Heights Penitentiary. Kristen is going with you, Barry. Kristen shouts, what? Why? And Sing looks at her, telling her, it was an opportunity. Kristen storms out of the office, and though Barry tells her that he's sorry, she doesn't even respond. But later that day, Barry watches Iris as she gets witness statements from people who watched the fight, and he thinks to himself that he needs to take it easy. He needs to be himself again. And then a voice shouts out, hey, Iris said she doesn't want to talk to you. The Flash looks over and sees Kid Flash, Wally, telling him, and neither do I. I thought stalking was Thon's thing. Barry tells him, whoa, I come in peace. The truth is I came to see you to give you this. The Flash holds out his Flash ring, and Wally asks why. And Barry tells him, because until I can find a way to control these negative speed force powers that Fawn possessed me with, I can't be the Flash anymore. And Wally then asks, what about the other Wally? We ever going to talk about what his deal is? And Barry says, we will, but I have to take care of myself first. Wally looks at the ring and he says, I've been going through some hard times myself. It wasn't until now that I realized that part of it was because I was guilty of the same things that I was mad at you for. So no, I'm not giving up on you, and I will not be taking your ring. Just like when I got my Speed Force powers, you were there to help train me. So now, I'm going to be the one helping you to learn your powers. Let's get to training. With Wally's help, Barry learned something about the negative Speed Force that no one seemed to know before. And that was that if two speedsters were close, they could lock their Speed Forces together and keep it from getting out of hand. 
Early one morning during training, Barry and Wally responded to a robbery at the local jeweler, where Black Spider and his thugs were in the middle of a firefight with the police. Another thing that Barry had learned after his run-in with blood work was that the negative speed force could also be controlled by his emotions. So with keeping calm and cool, he and Waze can use the negative speed force to his advantage, even if it's still a little chaotic. After the Flash releases a negative blast at the Black Spider, Wally runs past, catching the momentum from the diamonds that were thrown to the bullets that were fired and launching himself at the gunman. The store owner runs out shouting that his diamonds are all over the streets. There's no way that he could. But before he could even finish, Wally flies by grabbing all of the diamonds, stating that there were exactly 110 diamonds. Once the two went their separate ways, it was time for Barry to start his first day at work in his newly relocated lab in the Iron Heights Penitentiary. Iron Heights was originally a military hospital in the mid 20th century, but one night there was a terrible fire that ended up trapping hundreds of patients and staff members and none survived. Since then, the building was converted into one of the most secure prisons in the world, rivaling even that of Belle Reve. As the boat pulls up to the island, Kristen looks up and says the place is hell. And Barry smiles, telling her that it would be worse if they were locked in a cell, wouldn't it? Kristen grabs her bag and walks off the boat, telling Barry that she still has to work with him and stop smiling, it's annoying. He was the reason that they both got transferred here, and he doesn't get to make jokes about it. Barry tells her, come on, at least we weren't late. And once the two get inside, Warden Wolf tells him that if he wasn't early, then he may as well be late. That is his first strike. Two more strikes will lead to an automatic termination from the CCPD. Director Singh may have been lenient on the subject, but Iron Heights will not. Being late costs lives. As Wolf leads the two of them to their office, he explains that after Eobard Thawne's escape, they've increased security 1,000-fold. No one is able to breach their walls or enter without his knowing. Kristen asks, what about someone like The Flash? And Wolf says that it would still be impossible, even for him. In fact, one day I hope to hold The Flash in here. After all of the damage that he's done to Central City, The Flash has earned a spot in this cell. The doors to the office open, and just as Kristen begins to speak, Wolf says, yes, this is a cell. An older model that has been refurbished for your lab. But don't read too much into it. This is also for your safety in the event that the prisoners misbehave. Soon a guard steps in telling Wolf that they have a commotion out in the yard and Wolf tells the two to allow him to show them how they can manage misbehavior around here. Everyone walks outside to see two inmates getting ready to fight, one of them being August Hart. Godspeed himself. As August and the other inmate grab onto each other, Kristen asks, isn't he going to stop them? Wolf tells her, no. They aren't hurting anyone but themselves. There is no reason for us to get involved. While the two fight below, August looks up and sees Barry Allen, and the other inmate takes the opportunity gut-punching August. Wolf then tells them, that's enough now. It's time for Pipeline to report to the yard. Fun's over. The doors open below and a group of armed guards walk out, hitting everyone with sonic blasts until they fall to their knees. Wolf says that he named them Pipeline after the wing of the prison that was destroyed during the riot of 2011. Pipeline was particularly hard and brutal, so it was a fitting name. As the guards surround August and the inmate, August punches the inmate one last time and the guards hit him with the sonic disruptors. Wolf laughs, stating that Pipeline's sonic disruptors brings down these animals without even leaving a mark, perfect for keeping them all in line. While the inmates are led back to their cells, Kristen asks why is he keeping them all in their costumes? And Wolf tells her that he has allowed them to continue wearing their costumes as a constant reminder of who they really are. Not only can they never escape Iron Heights, but they cannot escape their past. In Iron Heights, there is no group therapy, no job training, no diaper changing. Kristen asks, isn't that all a bit harsh? What if some want forgiveness or redemption? And Wolf quotes Shakespeare by stating, Hell is empty, and all of the devils are here. Kristen then turns to Barry for support, but Barry says that Wolf's right. Iron Heights is their justice system at work. They're not talking about minor felonies. This place is the worst of the worst. Most of these people were in and out of Arkham. They don't deserve a second chance. Kristen begins to question Barry, but Wolf says that he may have been wrong about him. Maybe Iron Heights is where you belong after all, Barry Allen. Once the work day is done, Barry runs after Kristen, telling her that he knows that he got him into this mess, but they can. And Kristen stops him, telling him that the day's over. Good night. He sighs and starts to call Wally so that they can talk, but then something runs by grabbing him. And Barry shouts, what the hell, Wally? But a female voice tells him, wrong speedster. Miss me, Barry? As Barry looks up, he sees Mina, the woman that he was about to date and he thought was killed by Godspeed in the first story arc. The link to that is down below. A few months ago, Mina was a scientist working in Star Lab studying the Speed Force when she met the same fate as Barry Allen. She became a speedster and even worked alongside him. But she died when Godspeed had killed her along with two other speedsters attempting to steal their Speed Force. The problem with dying is that that person is gone forever, except right now, she's standing before Barry Allen. She says that she knows that this is a lot to take in, but she promises that this will all make sense. And Barry stops her, asking, Make sense? It's not like you just went away and you weren't returning my calls. You died. Godspeed killed you and two other speedsters. 
Me and Eterrence telling him, I think about them all the time. They were so scared and in so much pain just knowing that I'm alive and that they... Barry tries to comfort her, telling her that what happened to them is not their fault. And just then, Wally comes running by shouting to Barry that he got his message and... But before he could finish, he sees Mina. And he immediately jumps and hugs her, shouting, You're alive! How? Barry then asks, It was you, wasn't it? When I was training Wally, I thought you were alive somewhere, but I could never catch up. How are you here now? Mina explains that the Speed Force absorbed her. She doesn't understand it completely, but she learned so much. She was trapped, but she never stopped fighting against its pull, and she came back to save him. Barry asks, what is that supposed to mean? And Mina tells him, it's the negative Speed Force. It's killing you, Barry. Barry says that Eobard had the negative Speed Force for years, and it wasn't killing him. And Mina stops him, stating that Eobard didn't have the negative Speed Force and the normal Speed Force at the same time. They're clashing against each other, and they are tearing you apart. Barry then asks, so... You know this because the Speed Force told you? Mina says that she wasn't lying. She was inside of the Speed Force. She saw things. But please, she can explain everything. Just come with her. The next morning at the Central City Demolition Derby, Wally asks why exactly are they here? And nothing was really explained. And Mina says that she picked this place because he can really let loose here. Go as fast as he wants and crash into anything. The only difference is that he'll be wearing a monitor so that the data on the negative Speed Force can be collected and examined. Barry, in his Flash costume, gets ready to run. And Wally says, wait! If the Flash runs, I'm gonna run with him to make sure that we get what we need. Mina tells him that that's fine, and just as she gets ready to say, ready, set, go, the two have already ran a lap around her. Wally asks Barry how he's feeling, but Barry doesn't answer. The negative speed force begins to come out, and Barry quickly begins to lose control of it, running through the cars and destroying everything that he touches. Wally tries to catch up, shouting that he needs to stop, but Barry says that he can't! And Mina needs a test of what the negative speed force can do. And then, before he can finish, Wally tackles him to the ground, stating that he doesn't care what she wants. He cares about him, and what is he going to do about it? Fight me? Suddenly, Barry stops and he fights back the negative Speed Force, shouting, No! I would never hurt you, Wally. Soon, the Speed Force begins to fade and Mina yells that that was perfect. He might not feel good about it, but with that data, she can get a better understanding and have him cured. Wally then asks Mina what's the deal. She suddenly shows up out of nowhere and she doesn't really say where she's been and all she can do is talk about the negative Speed Force. Barry stops him, telling him to give Mina a chance and tells Mina that it's okay. Wally and him are just having some trust issues lately. As the sun begins to set, Barry and Mina watch, and Barry says that he's so sorry. Everything that happened to her, it was his fault. There's nothing that he can do to make it right. Mina tells him that he needs to stop being so hard on himself. What happened with the negative speed force and Godspeed? It wasn't his fault. Mina sighs, stating that she used to center her entire life around things that she could control. It made her feel safe. But then she was struck by the speed force lightning, and she allowed some chaos into her life. Had to learn to let things go. Maybe... He should do the same. Barry tells her that he knows, or at least part of him knows, but the other part is afraid that if he eases up, somebody cares about will get hurt. The last time that he took a day off was when they watched the sunrise together, and now the sun is setting. Mina turns back to Barry, stating that he is so gullible. Before Barry can understand what she meant, black hole soldiers run out, shooting both Barry and Wally with negative energy. She begins laughing, stating, You are so predictable. You always let that big heart get the best of you, don't you? The soldiers begin to wrap Barry up, and he says, How could you be working with Black Hole? Wally shouts, I know it! This isn't the Mina that we knew, Barry! Mina pulls back her mask, telling them, You wanted answers? So let me show you. She begins to run circles around Barry, channeling the negative speed force, and Barry yells, Don't do this! You don't want this! But Mina doesn't answer, and after a flash of light, everything stops. Wally breaks free, running over, asking, What happened? Your power's gone? Barry struggles, telling him that he's fine, but Mina, the negative speed force, begins to surge and crackle around Mina, and she tells him that she wasn't lying when she said that she was coming back to save him. Now the negative speed force is hers! Mina then asks, Do you really want to know why? It's because the negative speed force is unexplored. You've only scratched the surface of what Eobard created. Helping Black Hole steal the negative speed force is just the start. Using the powers of the negative speed force, Mina shocks Barry, knocking him to the ground. Wally runs over to check on Barry, but Mina taunts him, so he charges at her. Before he could do anything, Mina grabs him by the throat, slamming him down, shouting, All the Flash ever talked about was how he could save everyone. How come he couldn't save me? Barry gets up to chase after her, asking, What are you gonna do now? Kill us? And she shouts, You let me die! I was trapped and you never came for me! It was Black Hole who saved me! Barry tells her to wait, he was trapped in there before too. You can't come back without a lightning rod. Someone to keep you grounded. I... I could have been that lightning rod for you! Before he could catch up, the negative speed force shoots back, tripping him. And Mina tells him, You're lucky the Black Hole told me to keep you alive. 
Right now, you have a choice. Follow me or save Kid Flash. The Black Hole soldiers begin loading their guns again and just as they fire, Barry runs back to share the brunt of the attack. Barry struggles stating that he knows that it hurts, but we can get out of this. Just connect your Speed Force Lightning to mine. Using their combined powers, the Flash and the Kid Flash release enough feedback to short out the energy guns and break free. Before the soldiers have a chance to react, Barry and Wally start taking the soldiers out and they finish as they punch into the last man standing. A little while later, back at the Black Hole Labs, the scientists scan Mina's body stating that the negative Speed Force has been stabilized. But the problem still stands. The powers are ripping her apart. She shouts that she doesn't care. They have a job to do and nothing will get in their way. They will learn everything about the Speed Force and... But before she can finish, there's a loud crack -a -ka boom And all of the scientists are instantly vaporized. With the lightning, a voice calls out to Mina, asking if she's forgotten her place in their plans. The first storm that they unleashed as Black Hole was merely a test. Next time, with her help, they will have control of it. Once that happens, Rajan, the god of lightning, will rain down on this world. Back with Barry and Wally, the two take their time walking home, trying to make sense of everything that just happened. Barry says they need to find out if Black Hole is controlling Mina, and if they are, they need to help her. As Wally walks up to the porch, he says that at least Mina freed him from the negative speed force, and Barry quietly says, yeah. But before leaving, he asks, do you think? But Wally stops him, stating that Iris needs more time. I'm pretty sure that you do too, Barry. Despite everything, though, I'm glad that we had today together. Barry turns back, telling him, yeah, you're right. And he heads home. As Wally gets back inside, Iris calls out that she's a little offended that he thought he could sneak past her. Wally says that he didn't know that she was up. Is it because of the nightmares? And an image of Eobard flashes before her as she tells him no. Wally tells her that it's okay. He has them too. Whenever he runs, he can feel the pain in his knee from when the reverse flash attacked them. How about he makes them some tea and they get some sleep? But back with Barry, he runs thinking that Mina did at least make him realize something can't do this alone. He is much better with another by his side. Before Barry could finish that thought though, his phone rings and on the line, Warren Wolf tells him that he needs to get to Iron Heights. Something's happened. There's been a murder. And standing behind Wolf are two black hole soldiers. Growing up, Barry loved to read good mystery novels. He wanted to be a detective who solved cases using the evidence and quick thinking to find out who did it. But after becoming the Flash, there was one part of those mysteries that he grew to hate. The beginning. With every step that he takes towards the crime scene, he's afraid of what he'll find. As he rushed into Iron Heights, he pushed past the guards, asking, Where is she? Where is Christine? And instead of finding what he dreaded the most, he sees something that was just as confusing. The dead body of one of the rogues, Roscoe Hines, aka Turbine. Christine tells Barry to calm down. She is nearly done with the scene. Though, they're gonna have to go do an autopsy. Her first guess is the cause of death would be strangulation. Barry thinks back to how Turbine's time trapped in the Speed Force twisted his mind. But his question is, how did Turbine even get out of his cell? Director Singh's voice calls out that that is not an investigation for them to figure out. They are no longer CSIs. Their duties are to preserve crime scenes now. Barry tries to reason with Singh, but he just tells him that he would hate for their first interaction to be the two of them not following orders. Again. But before Barry can continue to argue, digging himself deeper into a hole, Warden Wolf shouts, asking, What are you all doing standing here? You need to do your jobs and get out of my prison. Singh begins to state that he's going to need the security footage in the last 24 hours to make sure that there wasn't any foul play. Wolf tells him that they are all his. He's got nothing to hide. While everyone starts to try and piece together the crime scene, another voice calls out, It was me! It was the one-armed man! And now, witness my daring escape! Everyone turns back to see Axel Walker, the rogue known as Trickster, running towards everyone. Barry thinks that this would be an easy enough job for the Flash, but security would learn his identity. But that doesn't mean that his secret identity can't do the job. He quickly moves and he cracks Trickster in the jaw, allowing the guards to restrain him. Wolf yells out, there's no way that he could have killed Turbine. He was locked up in his cell and nobody gets past my security. As Trickster is dragged off, Christine mentions that Trickster kills Turbine and then confesses. Barry thinks she's right. That would be way too easy. The best way to find out what's going on would be to ask the other inmates. There wouldn't be anyone willing to talk to him though, except August Hart, also known as Godspeed. August was one of the first cops that would actually ask for advice on crime scenes. He didn't just write Barry off as some lab rat, instead he treated him like an equal. He was hit by lightning during the Speed Force storm, so Barry had to train him to fight alongside the Flash. Except August felt like being a hero meant more than just saving lives. It meant that he could kill criminals, and he became a murderer. He became Godspeed. Barry asks him, what does he know about Turbine's death? And August says that there's something different about him. Like he's got some darkness in his eyes. Barry yells, you don't know anything about me. Now, what do you know about Turbine? August tells him that Turbine's death is just the tip of the iceberg. 
the detective in him is seeing all kinds of red flags. His gut is telling him that. Barry shouts, your gut? Last time you trusted your gut and an innocent man was killed. And you had no sign of remorse in doing so. You aren't even a cop anymore. Barry balls up his fist, but a guard walks by telling him that he knows it's against the rules to be speaking to the inmates, right? Best move along. As night comes, Barry and Wally do what they do best, and they help stop a bank robbery as Flash and Kid Flash with two opposing groups fighting against each other to rob the bank. However, as the two speedsters leave the scene, the crime boss Copperhead watches. She says that her men would have been in and out if their guys didn't show up. The conflict between the two organizations isn't good for business. A voice then asks, Now you see why a union between our sides would be beneficial then. Copperhead tells the voice fine and tells his boss that she'll agree with the plan. As she walks away, Mira Master appears in the window, smiling. Back at Iron Heights, the guards make their rounds on the inmates, but as the guard passes by Captain Cold, he begins to glitch. Below Iron Heights, Captain Cold is sitting on his frozen throne with money spread all around him, asking, What's the word on Copperhead? Mira Master tells him, She's game. And Cold says, Told ya. She couldn't resist what we've built up. Safe and hidden away from the Flash and the CCPD. As Cold goes on about his plans for his underground crime ring, August steps up in front of all of the other criminals asking, What do I have to do to get this collar off? Cold's sister, Golden Glider, asks, Why are they even entertaining this guy? He's not a rogue. And Cold scratches his chin, telling his sister, You bring up a point. What could you possibly offer the rogues, August? August's eyes light up and he tells them that he can give them what they've always wanted. The Flash! Later, as Barry and Kristen go through the contents of Turbine's cell, they come across a stack of books. Most of them are just law books, but there's one that Christine finds that stands out. A Christmas Carol. Barry looks at it, stating that this book is about redemption, and Turbine's files said that he was a model inmate who stayed out of trouble. Without any kind of evidence, they're not going to get anywhere. Christine tells them that they both know that that evidence was always there. They just have to know where to look. They sneak into their office, and then they make their way to the solitary confinement to check on Trickster. But when they pull the door open, they find Trickster without his prosthetic arm and black eyes. Kristen asks what did the guards do to him, and just as Trickster begins to explain what happened after they took his arm, he stops himself and he asks, what do you want? Barry says that if the guards are abusing him, they're going to get him out. And Trickster tells him, and I thought I was the one with the jokes. Barry then asks, why would a rogue kill a rogue? You all used to be thick as thieves, what changed that? Trickster grips his mask, stating that the rogues are stronger than ever. Turbine was always going on about forgiveness and the error of his ways. He was gonna rat us out. He needed to go away. But before Barry could ask another question, both him and Kristen are grabbed by the guards and Wolf asks, What are you doing here? Barry tells him, What any good CSI does. Finding the truth. Kristen asks, What did you do to the kid? What kind of warden are you? And Wolf asks them, Are you questioning my authority? That's strike two, and if I catch you investigating this or disobeying my orders again, you are done here. He sends them back to their office, but Barry knows he's just gonna have to investigate this alone, otherwise he's going to get Kristen in trouble. He heads over to Trickster's cell, and when he turns the corner, he sees August standing there, out of his cell. August whispers, you gotta trust me. But before Barry could ask, August yells, why don't you mind your own business and scurry off to your lab? August then goes back to his cell, and as Barry starts looking through Trickster's things, he finds the book, A Christmas Carol. Barry thinks that August was one of the best detectives in Central City. He would never be dirty. He wouldn't know how to plant evidence, which is why this is such an obvious plant. As Barry searches, he finds a drawing of a map of Central City with a marker and an X stating 6 p.m. sharp. So after work, Barry heads over to Wally because all of this has the markings of being a tramp. And what they find out is Copperhead's men are loading up cargo that was given to them. With the two trucks, Barry dismantles one of them before they can escape, and the other starts to drive off. Wally gets ready to chase after it, but Barry tells him to hang on. He kicks open one of the crates to pull out a very large gun, and he says, Wait, this isn't like any gun. I know this design. He pulls the trigger, releasing a blast, freezing the rest of the crates that were left behind. Wally says that that's one of Captain Cold's, and Barry says, Yeah, boxes of Captain Cold's guns. Cold is the only expert at building these guns. There should be no reason why these guys even have it. Barry grabs the thugs asking, where does this tunnel lead? And the thug shouts, Copperhead will kill us. Barry then asks the thug, you do know that normal human eyeballs can burst at certain speeds, right? And the thug shouts, okay, okay. Copperhead's been feuding with some new guy over the crime world of Central City. These guns are supposed to be a peace offering from them, so we worked out a truce. Wally says he's gonna follow where the other truck went, and Barry says, good, keep a safe distance from them. I'm gonna follow this tunnel and see exactly where it leads. He bolts down it and finds himself in a facility, but on one of the doors, he reads the words, Iron Heights Hospital. Suddenly, the door slams shut, and a voice tells Barry, I know that look. That detective mind of yours is working, but you're figuring it all out just a little too late. Barry looks back to see August, and August goes on telling him, you're right where you belong. 
Barry says that he should know that a cell can't hold him. He can just vibrate through. But just then a blast of cold air hits him and freezes him in place. Behind August, the rest of the rogues step out to watch and another voice tells the Flash, I've gotta say, knowing the Flash is still out and running around just doesn't sit with me. Me and the rogues are happy here. This setup is the best thing that we could have asked for. Safe from the cops, safe from the Flash. As Cold finishes wrapping up his fist, he cracks his knuckles stating, You're in my world now. Cold starts punching down into Barry, asking him, You know every time my dad would hit either me or my sister, he would always beg for forgiveness. Then he would just do it again and again. The Flash starts fighting back, yelling, You're not your father! And Cold tells him, I know, I would never ask for forgiveness. With one last punch, Cold knocks the Flash down while the other rogues start cheering. Cold then kicks the Flash in the stomach, telling him, I gotta say, I'm kinda glad the Flash will witness the rogues' big win. Any minute now, those Cold guns, the peace offering, they're going to explode, giving Copperhead and anyone around her the worst case of frostbite ever. Copperhead will be dead, and Central City will belong to the rogues. As the rogues outside the cell watch, August smiles, stating that that's just what he was waiting to hear, and he turns back, punching Heatwave. Weather Wizard asks if he's insane, and August tells him probably, and he flips the cold switch off in the cell. Just as the Flash's powers begin to return, he makes quick work, knocking everyone out. He then grabs August by the shirt, and August throws his hands up, telling him, Whoa, whoa, whoa! I was on your side! I only joined the rogues to find out what their plan was to kill Copperhead. The Flash says, Let's go. We're gonna have a long talk after I save Copperhead. He then realizes that Wally is chasing after those guns and August tells him, Go, I'll keep the rogue secure and get Wolf. As the Flash races out of Iron Heights, he radios over to Wally, frantically asking him if he's there. Wally quietly responds, Yeah, I followed the truck with Captain Cold's guns directly to Copperhead. But don't worry about a thing, I'm gonna take care of this. The Flash shouts from, Wait, those guns are bombed! However, of course, Wally doesn't hear the message and he runs up to Copperhead telling her to freeze. And yes, pun intended. Copperhead looks at him asking, what are you doing? Because it looks like you're trespassing and I highly doubt you have a warrant. So you might as well run back to the playground. Just then there's a beep and all of the guns in the crates begin to explode. Wally tells Copperhead to get behind him because just as the explosions are about to take them both out, the Flash runs through grabbing them. Once the police arrive, Barry gives his reports to the detectives. And he says, ultimately, they have to let Copperhead go. Wally shouts, come on, she's working with Captain Cold. And Copperhead asks, why would he try and kill me then? This is just a case of the wrong place at the wrong time. I have no idea why those cold bombs were sent to me. I'm just an innocent bystander with a terrific lawyer. Copperhead then goes to her car. She sits in the back seat telling the driver that is done. They have no idea that they run the show now. Back at Iron Heights, Wolf begins wrapping up and clearing out Cold's hideout, stating that their only witness here is a murderer. August tells him that he knows what he is, but this happened on his watch. The rogues use the tech concealed inside of their costumes that he let them wear. Cold laughs, telling him, Who's gonna believe the word of a killer? And Barry walks in out of costumes, dating, They don't need to. They only need to believe the evidence. Wolf asks, What are you doing here with Sing? And Barry tells him, I'm not allowed to investigate Turbine's murder, but Sing is. He then explains that while examining Turbine's body, there were rare cold residuals left behind. Leonard's snart has been using cold guns for so long that it's left an imprint similar to a gunshot residue. As Barry scans Cold's hands, he says that Captain Cold is responsible for Turbine's death, not Trickster. Cold learned that Turbine was going to report what's going on, so he killed Turbine and had Trickster take the fall. Cold shouts, no one betrays the rogues. It was eye for an eye. What are you going to do? I'm already locked up. Sing says that that's true, but he has an idea of a place that can handle him. But then Sing then goes on to state that this was an impressive screw-up, Wolf. Way worse than the inmates running the asylum. I'm gonna have to report this. However, Kristen rushes up telling Sing to hang on. Being Warden of Iron Heights is a big job. Wolf's methods might be hard, but they are needed. Sing tells her that he's disappointed to hear her say that. Barry says that he'll go ahead and walk Sing out, and as they leave, Kristen says that everyone deserves a second chance, right? Wolf pulls Kristen to the side, telling her, I may have misjudged you. There's a case you might be able to help me on. Something I'd like to keep hush-hush. Before leaving for the day, Barry stops by August's cell, stating that he could have escaped. August tells him that there was a moment where he thought about it, felt the wind on his face as he raced as Godspeed. But nah, stone walls do not a prison make. He goes on stating that even though what he did as Godspeed was terrible, he had to forgive himself. But until he earns the Flash's forgiveness, this is where he belongs. However, you, Barry, you do not belong here in Iron Heights. When your mother passed, you used that grief to build a prison for yourself. So no matter how many times you've tried to move on, you've always held onto a piece of that prison. So trust me when I state that you've served your time. So Barry visits his mother's grave looking for that forgiveness. The trickster is released, Snart goes to Belle Reeve, and Kristen is working with Singh to investigate Wolf. Right now, he's trying to do the best that he can, be forgiven for the lies that he told and the mistakes that he made. He knows that forgiveness isn't cut and dry. It's a mystery and one that he can't solve. 
And the only person that he wants to try and solve it with is her. And he asks her, Iris, could you just forgive me? Since man's earliest days, they've always been fascinated with power. It gives control over life and death, and it would make sense that man would steal it repeatedly because it's what defines you. It's power that rules the world, and without it, man would be nothing. And now, its rightful owner wants that power back. In the current time, Barry Allen stands in the graveyard of his deceased mother, asking Iris the one thing that he's always wanted, forgiveness. When Red Death attacked Central City, they saw each other, and she said, Iris tells Barry that she knows what she said. She said that she missed him, and she meant it. Ever since he started working with Wally again, he's been happier. It meant a lot that even though they weren't talking, Barry's always been there for Wally. But with everything that's happened, Barry says that he knows and he would never want to rush her. He's sorry for how he acted after Thawne and all of the lies that he told. He just really misses his friends. After a few moments of silence, Iris tells him it's okay. But there's something that she's going to need before anything. She needs to talk to him to see his life and how he lives. Barry sighs and says, right, anything you need. In a blink of an eye, Iris is swept off her feet by Barry in his Flash costume and he says, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Iris tells him, please, I had it figured out the moment Thawne ripped the mask off. The night the lightning hit the crime lab is when you got the speed force. You used it and your knowledge of science to make a bright red suit so that you could be a hero in Central City. The real reason you've always been late is because you were out saving the world. Now, show me the chapter of Flash that I haven't read before. Meanwhile, in another part of town, a police escort hits the road transporting Dr. Carver. And Kid Flash is keeping a close eye on it. Carver should be on Kid Flash's hate list, but he was with Black Hole when they unleashed the Speed Force Storm that helped turn him into who he is now. Right now, Carver is on his way to stand trial for his crimes, but one would think that Black Hole would try and free him during his transfer to Iron Heights. Just as Kid Flash gets close, there's a purple blur and a female voice asking if he wants to race. As Avery jumps onto Kid Flash trying to hug him, he asks, I thought you were busy with the Justice League of China. Avery tells him that there's no way that she was going to miss Carver's trial. As the two continue to talk, there's a loud screeching coming out of the police escort and a sudden explosion. Kid Flash and Avery work together to try and pull people out of the fire, but then they see Carver, and it's too late for him. As Kid Flash looks at Carver's burning body, he says that this is a crime scene now, but why would Black Hole want to kill Carver? Just then, lightning begins to strike, and Avery looks up, stating, Uh... Kid Flash? Back with Barry, he returns to Central City carrying Iris after a visit to the Watchtower. Iris tells him that she needs to know everything before they can continue with this. In the back of Barry's mind, he thinks everything would mean telling her about the Flashpoint event and explaining to her that she really has two nephews named Wally. Wally himself said that he wasn't ready to tell her, and if he was to tell Iris everything about being Flash, he would have to reveal that. If you're confused, there are actually two Wally Wests. When the New 52 started after Flashpoint, we got a new kid Flash. Once we got to DC Rebirth, the original red-headed Wally came back. To keep things less confusing going forward, we will be referring to the New 52 Wally West as Kid Flash in this story, and we will be referring to DC Rebirth Wally West as Wally. That's when a voice rings out in Barry's head, stating that if he does, then she won't want Barry Allen. Barry suddenly stops putting Iris down, and she asks what's wrong, and Barry says, did you hear that? The voice tells him that being Flash is the only thing that makes him special. Why would a woman like Iris want to know the real Barry Allen if she can have the Flash? Iris begins to say that she doesn't hear anything, but as she says it, her speech begins to slow down until she stops moving. Barry looks around and now can see that not only Iris, but all of Central City is stopping except for him. The voice then tells Barry, come and Barry sees the lightning strike across the city. He rushes over to where it hit, and then he sees that it struck the Central City Police Department, and that somebody put a giant lightning rod on top of it. Lightning begins to strike it several more times. crack a ga crack a ga crack a ga coom And soon, Barry begins to see something coming out of that light. Something human-shaped. The voice tells Barry that he defeated them once before, but this time, they have speed. Multiplex begins to reach out, grabbing Barry, and another voice asks, Didn't your mother ever teach you sharing is caring? Or did she die before that? Barry looks back, asking, Mina? This is who you're working for? This is the leader of Black Hole? The man besides Mina tells him, My name is Rajin, Master of Lightning, and I am merely a soldier in this conflict. My lord and master is the true god of the Speed Force. Now bow to him. The voice from before returns, and it tells Barry, we haven't seen each other in a long time, but I've always been with you. Every time that you would prattle on about your mother, loves, friends, you were confessing. 
I know all of Barry Allen's secrets, your inner worries, even your fears, and now it's time. A giant arm reaches through the darkness, grabbing Barry, pinning him down, and Barry looks up to see Gorilla Grodd. Grodd shouts, The Speed Force will finally belong to me, because my life depends on it. Barry manages to free himself, yelling, You can't control me! So why don't you just tell me why you're dying instead? Grodd tells him, Death stalks me due to a rare degenerative disease that most of my fellow apes avoided. But slowly I am losing my mind to this infection. He begins to cough, telling him, <laughs> As much as I hate it, sharing Gorilla City technology with Black Hole was necessary. A lightning rod was constructed that will draw forth the Speed Force and save my life. Central City has been drained of all of its speed, and everyone inside is trapped in the moment. If anyone is to enter this field, they too will beat the same fate. Barry begins to fight back against Multiplex, yelling, I can help! This is not the answer! We can work together to find a cure, Grodd! And Grodd shouts, The Speed Force is the only way, and I will tear away what belongs to you now, Rajin! Raj Jin pulls out a wand and he says, I was just a lowly Star Lab scientist, obsessed with the Speed Force. That was until I heard Lord Grodd's voice. It freed me! And with this lightning wand, I'll be able to control the Speed Force storm and study it. Barry punches into Rajin, asking him, at what cost? And Rajin grabs him by the neck, pinning him to the ground, telling him, Lord Grodd promised me the secrets of the Speed Force. I would die for him. Just then, Kid Flash punches Rajin, telling him, Luckily, flashes don't kill. As Rajin falls to the ground, he lets go of the wand, and Avery jumps in, grabbing it, asking, Did anyone catch that awesome flip? Barry then asks, What are you doing here? You need to run! Take the lightning wand and get as far away from here as you can! Kid Flash tells him, No way! We can! But Barry yells over him, telling him, Grot is more dangerous than anything you've encountered. Please, go! Avery grabs Kid Flash by the arms, telling him, You heard the man! It's time for us to go! Grot then tells Barry, don't pretend you're sending the children away to save them. You just wish to keep them ignorant of what I know about you. The truth about Barry Allen, who you really are. You're a child who couldn't save his mother. A boy unable to prove his father's innocence. A man unloved. But that all changed when you became the Flash. Soon you would have friends, you would catch your mother's killer, and you would prove your father's innocence. You had it all. The Speed Force made you special. But deep down, you knew in your heart without those powers. You would be nothing. Barry finally collapses from Grodd's mental attacks and Grodd tells Multiplex to prepare him. Mina begins to hook Barry up to a device and tells him, if you want to survive this, don't fight it. Once Barry is in place, Grodd tells Mina to begin and she connects the generators together. And as the lightning starts to course through Barry and the surrounding area, Mina yells, it's too powerful. Barry tells them to stop. Stop right now, and as the power begins to fade, Grodd tells him, Now the world will know who the real hero is, without powers. And just like that, Barry Allen is no longer the Flash. Grodd calls out that the Speed Force burns in his veins. But it is not enough, I need more. He reaches down, grabbing Barry by the head, and he tells Rajin to go ahead and retrieve the wand. Bring me the other speedsters. But first, there is something I must show our fallen hero. He steps up to his throne, and it shoots into the air. Grodd holds out Barry's body, telling him, I was wrong about you. You aren't nothing. Grodd spits in his face, telling him, You're less than nothing. You're just human. He lets go of Barry's wrist, and Barry begins to feel himself falling back to the ground. He starts to accept his fate as he hears someone telling him, Not so fast! And Wally catches him before he hits the ground. Barry asks him how, and Wally says, I saw the lightning from over at Keystone and raced over. But never mind that. Why are you falling? Barry doesn't answer him right away, but that's when another voice calls out to Wally. He looks over, and Wally asks, Is that Kid Flash? And Kid Flash asks, What are you doing here? And Avery asks, What happened to Grodd? Wally then turns back to Barry asking, Grodd? He's as scary as they come. If that ape is here, we're going to need to come up with a plan and take him down together. Right, Barry? But after a few moments of not responding, Barry finally falls, stating, Grodd may have beat me, but he didn't beat the Flash. And Wally then says, I know, just tell me how to. That Barry stops him, telling him, no, you don't understand. Barry Allen is no longer the Flash of Central City. You are. A short while later, at the Speed Force Training Center, Barry begins running and shouts, Come on! Come on! And then he trips over his own leg. Avery tells him that he's right. His connection to the Speed Force is gone. Whatever Grodd did, he's once again a powerless member of the human race. The only thing that is not keeping him frozen in place like everyone else is the super small traces of Speed Force that are still in his system. And even that, that's about to wear off. Avery begins running around the lab, gathering up more tools to test with, but Barry calmly tells her to just relax. Kid Flash asks, How can you be so chill about this? And Barry says it's because Grodd said that he was dying. 
I believe him. Even before this, he always felt the Speed Force belonged to him. He'd even kill for it. We can't let that scare us. Kid Flash then asks, How are we supposed to stop Grodd without you? And Wally's voice says, Grodd is gonna have to go through me first. Wally slides in stating that he just did a bit of recon around the whole city, and it turns out that everyone has occupied at the lightning rod and not looking for them. If he had to guess, then they're waiting to make a move. Avery says that Black Hole's lightning rod is draining speed from everything in Central City. If it gets to full power and is triggered by Rajan's wand, it would engulf the entire world and steal all of the speed force, including their own. Kid Flash says that he loves these powers. He doesn't want to lose them just when he's getting used to them. And Avery sighs, telling him she doesn't want to lose them either. When God's speed was killing speedsters, she was willing to sacrifice the speed force, but now it's a part of who she is. Barry places his hand on her shoulder, telling her not to worry. We're gonna stop Grodd long before he takes your powers. Barry then says after looking over Mina's computers, the lightning rod isn't just stealing speed, it's slowing everything to a crawl. And if it hits absolute zero, everything dies. Wally says that they're gonna have to evacuate the city, like now! And Barry tells everyone, Wally's right, but we're gonna need Kid Flash and Avery to leave the city. They need to stay on the run, not in Central City. Kid Flash yells, no way, not this time. I'm not letting you. But Barry talks over him, telling him, now! Kid Flash scoffs, so it's gonna be like that, huh? All the times you told me to run, it's never been to run away from a fight. A second later, both Kid Flash and Avery leave, and Wally says, you know, you could have been a little nicer about it, Barry. Barry walks over to the table telling him, You don't need me to be nice. What you need for me is to become the Flash again. And with this wand, I'm gonna get my powers back. Wally says that he is the Flash. It's starting to sound like you don't trust me very much. Without even responding to the comment, Barry looks over at the wand telling him, This is the key. If I can adjust it and plug it into the lightning rod, I could get a jump start. Wally tells him that if it backfires, then you've just given Grodd what he wants. We gotta destroy the wand. Barry says, all I need is time. Evacuate the city and find Iris while I... Wally reaches out telling him, it's time you took a step back, Barry. But Barry tells him, I built a treadmill that can travel through time. I can handle a fancy lightning wand. Wally pulls on Barry's shoulder, but Barry shakes him off shouting, I need this. And after the two of them stare at each other, Wally says, you want time? You got it. And he runs out of the lab. Back out in the city, Avery asks Kid Flash, are they really gonna listen to Barry? And Kid Flash tells her, <laughs> yeah, no. In fact, I'm already working on a plan. Mina can track speedsters through the speed force. That's how we met in the first place. So if she wanted, she would have located us a long time ago, which means Grodd totally has her brainwashed. We're gonna snap her out of it. While Wally starts taking everyone out of the city, Barry continues his work on the wand. And after breaking a component, he gets frustrated and throws it. But for Wally, he finally gets to the person he wanted to avoid, his Aunt Iris. She was always there for him, but since he escaped the Speed Force, he's never there for her like she was for him. But before he could even think further, Rajin calls out, FLASH! And as he sees that it's just Wally, he says, Oh, it's you, the Pretender. I was told Iris West might be the target to allow us to catch the real Flash. However, Lord Grodd demanded that we collect the sidekicks as well. Wally shouts, You want the Flash? Then you got me. As Wally takes on Rajin, Barry heads out to the only other place that he knows that he might be able to get help. Iron Heights Penitentiary. He holds the broken wand and he heads over to Kirsten's lab, where she's found frozen holding a tablet. Barry says that he's sorry for doing this and he taps the override button on the tablet and he leaves. He walks over to the containment cell stating that Black Hole is back and they've attacked Central City. I believed you when you said you wanted redemption and right now, Central City needs you. So please, Godspeed. August steps out of his cell in his Godspeed costume telling him, of course, that's what friends are for, Barry. back with Wally. He begins to beat into Rajin, asking, where did Multiplex take Iris West? Where? Through Rajin's cracked mask, he laughs, stating, we took her to a real safe place. We need the girl for bait, so we won't hurt her. Yet. Wally asks, what does Grodd want? He already took Barry's speed. And Rajin begins to laugh, stating that Grodd knows Flash better than he knows himself. Stealing his speed is only the beginning of my master's rise to ultimate power. Meanwhile, over in the heavy, Barry and August are sifting through more black hole files when Barry comes through the original schematics for Rajin's lightning wand. As he looks at it, he says that this is what they needed. They should be able to alter the wand enough so that they can steal back the speed force. August tells him, wait a second, that's why you broke me out? This isn't about stopping black hole, but rather getting your powers back? Barry says that this is about doing what it takes to save Central City. I need the speed force back. August takes off his mask, telling him, you're starting to sound real familiar. You're starting to sound just like me. That sound of being obsessed, especially when it comes to the speed force, I killed for it. And yet, 
I was freed from Iron Heights. Why? Barry tells him that he's seen what Grodd's done to the city. This is what will happen to the rest of the world if he doesn't get his powers back. That is why this wand needs to work. August leans in, telling him, There are plenty of other tagalongs that you could have asked for help. Why did you free me, Barry? And Barry says it's because he knows Black Hole and their secrets. August tells him, No. You just wanted your bad friend to give you a pass. You don't want my help, you want my permission. So when this is all over, you can blame all the hard choices on me. Barry sighs, telling him, Grodd came to Central City because of me. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't stop him, and getting my powers back is my best bet to stop Grodd. If we can race past Grodd's army, you can get me close to the Lightning Rod, and then we can lock the Speed Force within me. It has to work. August says, My guts are telling me that this was a mistake. And Barry says, I broke you out because despite everything that we've been through, I still trust you. So now, can you trust me? Across town, Mina leaves to go make the final calibrations for the lightning rod when she suddenly stops. She looks around for a moment and says, You can show yourselves now. Both Kid Flash and Avery stop. And Mina tells them that they are brave to be entering the lion's den. Now what do you want? Avery says that they looked at her equipment at the Speed Force Training Center. That lightning rod is going to do more than just drain speedsters. It's going to kill everyone. Mina says that they, they're too young to understand. Grodd getting a Speed Force is a good thing. Kid Flash yells, Grodd is messing with your head. You need to fight back. You're already doing it by not tracking us down. Mina begins to generate power from the negative speed force that she took out of Barry Allen, telling the two of them that she doesn't need their help. She's right where she belongs. The lightning shoots out of her hands, and then there's a white blur that runs past, grabbing Kid Flash and Avery. A voice tells Mina, I am super sorry about the whole killing you thing. Can we be friends? Once the blur stops, Kid Flash looks at August, asking, Godspeed? Also at that moment, Wally runs up shouting to Barry, You gotta get the wand away from- But Barry tells him, No! My powers are the only thing that's going to save us! But while everyone tries to figure out what's going on, because now we have Barry yelling at Wally that he needs a lightning rod, and we have Mina with a negative speed force trying to fight against everyone, and on top of all of this, we have Godspeed, Mina calls to Grodd to listen to her thoughts. Send Multiplex. Seconds later, Multiplex appears to fight everyone, and Barry tells them all to keep him covered while he gets closer to the lightning rod. As Kid Flash, Avery, and Wally all begin to fight, one of them hits the real multiplex and suddenly all of the multiplexes vanish. Kid Flash says, nice, one of us must have gotten the real one, and Avery tells him it was totally her. They all look back to see Mina and August fighting, and Kid Flash asks, which one do we fight? Avery then says they should just watch, hopefully they'll take out each other. And Wally then looks around asking where is Barry, but up ahead, Barry says that he's sorry. Wally tries to run at him, shouting not to do it, and Barry slams the wand into the lightning rod, telling them all, This will save you all! Wally screams, Don't! But after Barry pushes the wand all of the way down, lightning begins to strike, and Barry Allen turns back into the fastest man alive. But that's when Grodd's voice tells him, You're right where I wanted you. All alone. I took what made you special, and you got what you needed. But both of us did. Bringing the wand back increased my mental connection to the Speed Force. Now I no longer need it to control the storm. I am the Speed Force Storm, and you have given me a gift beyond your wildest nightmares, Barry Allen. Barry begins to run towards Grodd, but as he gets closer, something shoots by, kicking him off his feet. Grodd tells him, You risked all of it because you thought you were the only one to protect the city. And because of that, a new army has been made. And no matter how fast you are, you can't possibly fight it. Barry looks up and he sees Wally and the others, each of them stating, Worship Grodd or die. With no other choice, Barry gets up and he begins to run, but in the back of his mind, Grodd continues to taunt him. Barry Allen, you're so obsessed with protecting your life as the Flash that you didn't even think of who you would hurt in the process. Barry hears the voice coming out of Kid Flash, but as he turns, he sees nothing. He shouts, Whatever game you're playing at using my family is unforgivable. Avery runs by asking, Is it because you're an expert at hurting your family? And then August runs by telling him, Grodd showed me what you really think of me. You think of me as nothing more than a killer. August then passes by a second time, punching Barry into a nearby truck. And Barry says, It was wrong for me to break you out, but together the four speedsters all yell at him, Liar! The only thing that you were thinking about was that you needed your powers to save everyone. Barry tells everyone, You have to fight back. You could win this together. And then Wally runs in telling him, Stop lying. You didn't have any faith in us, or you would have trusted us. You thought only you could save the day. Wally begins to chase after Barry, and as Wally gets closer, Barry tells him, You have to remember back to the day we met. Who was with you? 
Wally begins to slow down, telling him, Ugh, Aunt Iris. And Barry tells him, I know you're in there. You have to fight it, Wally. Wally stops struggling to remain in control, and he says, God, whatever the lightning wand did made its connection to the speed force even stronger. He wants to see you truly defeated before he takes all the speed force for himself, Barry. As Wally goes on, he falls to his knees, shouting out in pain, and Barry tells him, You need to keep fighting, Wally. Wally looks up, and through Wally, Grodd tells him, You are such a fool. Wally grabs Barry by the leg and begins to drag him throughout the city. But as he's thrown back to the ground, Grodd tells him, You have lost. And now, with the Flash's connection to the Speed Force, I am the lord and master of the Speed Force. Grodd digs his fist into the ground, going on, telling him, Mina was the easiest to control. She had real anger. Barry gets back up, telling him, This is between you and me! But before he can finish, Avery, August, Kid Flash, and Wally all start hitting him, shouting, All you did was push us away! As the four go on, Barry doesn't fight back, and instead he accepts each blow. He falls to the ground, and Grodd shouts, demanding to know, Why aren't you fighting back? Barry sits back up, and he tells him, I thought you were inside my head, but no matter what I do, you'll never get into my heart. Because of that, I will never, ever, raise a hand to my family. He stands back up, holding his arms out, telling him, you're gonna have to kill me, so go ahead. Grodd begins to growl, asking, This is how you want to win? A moral victory? Do you ask for death to mock me? Hide what could save you? Barry tells him, You won't just stop at the Speed Force. You hunger for more power, and you won't stop until you have the world under your fists. Grodd punches into Barry, asking, You think you know me? You would kill for the family that you're pushing away? If I can't have the love of Gorilla City, then the Speed Force is a worthy substitute. Why use these gifts to run when you could use them to rule? It was a waste of your power. After knocking Barry away, Grodd begins to charge towards Barry as he stands back up. He looks back and he smiles while holding the lightning wand, and Grodd asks, What are you doing? And Barry tells him that he was collecting the pieces that he needed to adjust the lightning wand to create a very specific frequency in the Speed Force. And he's going to do what he was supposed to do from the start. As Grodd gets closer, Barry charges the wand with the Speed Force, and Grodd grabs onto it, feeling the Speed Force shoot throughout him. Barry then says, I'm doing everything in my power to save you, Grodd. As an explosion goes off, Wally runs over, telling him, Grodd had his teeth firmly clamped into our brains. And Barry pushes some rocks off of him, telling him, Not anymore, he doesn't. You're all free. And for that, thank you. Wally asks, What are you talking about? You just saved us all. Wally helps Barry up, and Barry tells him, You were the Flash. I should have trusted you to handle this on your own, and you did. Wally says that he didn't, though. Iris is still missing. And Barry stops him, telling him, We'll find her. August asks, So, what did Barry do about the big, ugly monkey? Grodd weakly says, He cured me. The disease is gone. But I am also powerless. Barry tells him that his mental powers were a part of his heritage. He'll still have those. But whatever connection he had to the Speed Force is gone. Forever. Now it's time to turn that lightning rod off and return to Gorilla City to enjoy your new lease on life, Grodd. Grodd yells as he hits the controls on his throne and Mina shouts, You can't let him turn it off! The lightning is the only thing keeping the storm in check! The lightning rod begins to build up power and Wally asks, Do you feel it? Barry tells him, Yeah. The storm isn't just filled with speed force energy anymore. It's the negative speed force energy in there as well. The lightning rod begins to rip apart the city and Grodd yells, I would rather be dead than live without power. And I will take Central City with me. Barry quickly jumps up and begins to attack Grodd so that he can give the time to everyone else to evacuate the rest of the city. But while Barry yells to Wally to keep looking for Iris, Grodd slams him into the ground, shouting, The city is lost. Further proof that you are nothing even with powers. Grodd begins to punch him over and over again, and just as he delivers the final blow, he feels something. Grodd looks back to see Barry, and Barry starts punching into him, asking, How? I just saw you. And Barry asks, Saw me beaten to a pulp? Yeah. I used that connection that we made to make you see what you wanted. You killing the Flash. Barry reaches up to help Grodd up, and Grodd tells him, Pull back your hand. I would rather be buried under my final triumph than live another day without the Speed Force. But just then, lightning cracks, and three guards from Gorilla City appear, stating that he will not die here. It is their duty as the Gorilla City guards to arrest Grodd. His presence here has been known to them since the attack, but they couldn't enter until the lightning rod fell. Grodd will pay for his crimes, but not by a human's hand. They needn't worry about Grodd ever again. Before Barry even has a chance to stop them, there's a loud crack, and another bolt of lightning strikes right where Barry is standing. At the last second, Wally pushes him out of the way, stating, You should know better than standing still during a lightning storm. Oh, and don't worry about Iris. 
I found her. The rest of the speedsters run up and August asks, Did I really just see a bunch of flying monkeys or am I finally losing it? Avery then says that they got everyone out of the city but Grot is right. Central City is gone. Mina takes out her tablet and says that it's worse than that. The negative speed force is spreading fast. It'll soon overwhelm Central City and then Keystone. Barry tells her that there's only one choice. Race around the city to let the speed force lock in with it and steal the speed from it. That should dissipate the storm. Mina says that this is the opposite of the speed force storm. That's why it's destroying everything instead of giving everyone powers. Even if they make it out alive, they could lose their powers for good. Barry looks at himself and says, I didn't say we. I fought hard so I can get my powers back, but I was wrong. I don't need them. All I need is the Flash family. Now all of you run. Make sure that everyone is safe. Wally asks him, are you planning on doing what I think you're going to do? And Barry stops him and says, there's a letter on my desk addressed to Iris. It's for both of you to read. Give it to her and tell her that I loved her. But as Barry finishes, he begins to run. Wally catches up to him yelling, this world needs Barry Allen. I need Barry Allen. Don't you get that? We need you to be the fastest man alive. If running into the storm is the only way to save the world, then you're not doing it alone. As the other speedsters start to run up, August then runs with them asking, let's take bets as to who's the fastest. And Barry tells him, Green Lantern and Green Arrow used to take bets. But the truth is, we're fastest when we run together. All six speedsters begin to run to contain the storm. And as Barry said, the storm slowly begins to dissipate. Once it finally fades, Wally yells, yeah, it worked, go Team Flash. And Barry says, people call me a dork. As everyone stops, they all begin to use their powers. And everyone says, yep, still got him. And Kid Flash looks around asking, where'd Godspeed go? And Mina says that she saw him disappear into the storm as it was dying. But as she says that, Barry takes off running and Kid Flash asks where he's going. Before Kid Flash could follow, Wally stops him and tells him, hold on, I know exactly where he's going. A few seconds later, Barry pushes himself through the crowd of evacuated people calling out for Iris. Once Iris hears her voice, she runs up hugging him. But in another place, in another time, a man is looking at a statue of Barry and Iris kissing. And he says that the letter that he left was very touching. Glad the museum kept it in their archives. He really believed he was going to die in that storm, huh? That was the only difference between him and Wally. He knew that one day he would lose. But he never knew me as Hunter Zolomon. He was never my Flash. But here, in the 25th century, I've studied the history of the Flash, all of them. I know his profile better than anyone, even Eobar Thawne, and I can see the cracks in his legacy, and how to turn those cracks into the end of the Flash family, as I bring them to war! In the garage of Iris West, her and Wallace listen to the radio as she finishes the last bit of repairs to Wallace's dirt bike. The announcer on the radio reports that a tidal wave is coming towards the coast of Bad Henicia, but the residents are being saved by what looks like two flashes. Iris tightens the last bolt, asking Wallace if he could turn that off, and as he does, he says maybe he should go. Iris stops him, telling him no. Barry and Wally handle this themselves. Wallace then asks Iris how does she know her way around a bike. She gets on it, telling him that the only way to get around Markovia was on these things. When they broke down, you really only had yourself to get them back up to speed. Iris starts the bike up, stating that luckily, working with things that go fast runs in the West family. Just then, Barry and Wally run in, and Barry says that he only lost a second on him on the way here. Wally tells him it's because he always takes the scenic route. Iris ruffles his hair, telling him, Any trouble running on water? And Barry says that he tried to explain the science of the tidal wave, but Wally wouldn't listen. As everyone laughs, Wally screams out in pain as another of his memories comes back. Barry yells that they're taking him to Star Labs right now. He knows they don't want to, but they need to get these visions under control. Wally starts getting up, telling them, No! Something is coming! A second later, there's a flash of light in the voice of Commander Cold, along with his renegades, calls out to Iris. He tells her, By the order of the temporal courts, you're under arrest for the murder of Eobarthon. Barry runs up to Cold, telling him, There has to be a misunderstanding. We didn't! And Cold stops him, telling him, Mr. Allen, we know who you are, and frankly, we don't care. We've been ordered by the Temporal Court's judge to bring Miss West to the 25th century. Everyone begins to put on their costumes and Wally tells Barry, You heard him, right? They know who you are. And we also know a rogue when we see one. Barry then asks, With a name like the Renegades, how can we trust you? And Cole tells him, I was worried that you wouldn't remember our last encounter. Seems I was right. Wally gets in front of Iris, telling him, She's not going anywhere. And Barry tells everyone, Okay, okay, calm down a second. Maybe we should hear them out. If we talk things out, we can... But without a second thought, Wally grabs Iris and starts running, stating, This is not happening! 
Barry calls out to Wally, and Cold and his team take off right behind him. Down the street, Iris shouts to Wally to stop right there and put her down. She can take care of herself, and they don't ever run from a fight. Just as they stop, Weather Warlock fires lightning down on the two of them, and Iris begins to run with Heatstroke taking off after her. Wallace jumps into the air, punching Heatstroke to stomp him, and Barry catches up, telling Cold that they don't need to fight, they need... Cold tells him, it's too late. Golden Guardian, you're up. Golden Guardian smiles and holds up her yellow lantern ring, stating, And the blackest day and the brightest night, beware your fears made into light! Let those who try to stop what's right burn like my power! Sinestro's might! And as she finishes, fear constructs of evil flashes start running out, taking everyone down. As Barry and the others try to fight back, more and more constructs appear, and Cold holds out his gun, stating that he's sorry to do this, but... However, before he can pull the trigger, Iris flies out of the garage on Wallace's dirt bike, running into Cole, telling him, no one ever takes aim at her family. Before she can get very far, though, Wally starts to have another vision. And just as the renegades surround him, Cold gets back up, telling everyone, stand down. Wally West is having what we in the 25th century call a temporal seizure. It comes from time travel or changes in the timeline. His memories are being splintered, and they're causing damage to his nervous system. Iris asks if he can help him, and Cole tells her, Yes, but our orders are for you. If you come with us and answer our questions, your nephew will be cared for. Iris says that even with Thawne's blood on her hands, her family let the fear of that man haunt them. No more. She's not afraid of him. Let's go. Barry yells out for them to wait. Let me come as a witness. I can explain her innocence to the courts. They'll understand that it was self-defense. Cole tells him that he really doesn't care who comes with, as long as Iris is with us. And Wallace says, if you're going, I'm going too. I would run to the ends of the earth for her. No one else is going. I don't trust them. Maybe they're wrong. Maybe the visions are a warning. Barry says, look, Iris is right. This needs to end. If you don't want to go, I understand. Wally tells him, no, I'm going to follow. I'll trust them for now. Cold sighs, stating, great. Happy family. Hooray. Next stop, the temporal courts. As a loud, and in a flash of light, the group is suddenly in the temporal courts of the 25th century, except Wally West isn't with them. Barry looks around asking where is Wally and Cold looks at a scanner stating that he should be with us. This is all wrong. Meanwhile, over at the destroyed Flash Museum, Wally appears and frantically looks around shouting, asking, where is everyone? What is that? A voice tells him, this is your life, your real life. This is everything that was taken from you. Everyone you ever known or loved, forgotten, but not lost. Barry did nothing to find them and they're all trapped as out of the Speed Force, just like you were. You can still be the hero that they need, but the only way to save your family is to destroy the Speed Force. Wally spins around asking who's there, and Hunter Zolomon steps out between the glass cases that are for Jai and I Ray West, stating, My name is Hunter Zolomon, but you can call me Zoom, and together, we're gonna save your children. Wally walks up to the cases displaying the costumes of his children, and Hunter asks, You felt something was missing, didn't you? When you were trapped in the Speed Force, Barry pulled you out, but deep down, you knew there was something else. Your family, your friends, your children. I've never forgotten. All I wanted to do is show you how to be a better Flash and for you to recognize that potential to be the greatest hero that ever lived. Now the pathway has been revealed. Let me show you the way down the right path. Wally clenches his fist, swinging, yelling, like I would ever follow a person like you. And as he hits Hunter, a flood of memories pour into his mind and he steps back, stating, Ugh, you tried to kill Linda to teach me a lesson in tragedy. You took my kids, but I got them back. Did you do something to them again? If you don't tell me where I, Ray, and Jai are, I will drag you across space and time. Hunter pulls down his mask, telling him, Just listen, I'm not here to fight. Living in the future has given me some perspective on what I've done in the past. Wally begins to create a whirlwind, knocking Hunter away, asking, Perspective? You tormented my family! And Hunter slowly begins to get back up with Wally watching, asking, You don't have powers. And Hunter tells him, That's what I've been trying to say, I've changed. After the cosmic treadmill exploded in the Flash Museum, my thoughts were all mixed up. It corrupted my way of thinking, but in the end, I'm still your friend, Wally. Together we can fix our mistakes. You can continue to hate me and lock me up, or we can be heroes again. Back with the others. Cold looks over his reading, stating, Wally did have a crazy amount of temporal energy, but this isn't right. Someone grabbed him. The time stream is a crime scene. As Barry asks for help, the Golden Guardian runs in yelling that they have a problem. The judge is missing. But they found evidence in his office, and it's a little distressing. Suddenly, a video is played back on the many screens that shows the fight between Iris and Eobard. It shows Iris killing Eobard Thawne in self-defense, and Colt then says, This may not have been about Iris. It's about bringing Wally here too, and I know where he is. Barry yells that if Wally is in danger, we're going after him. 
and Cole tells his team to lock everyone up until we can sort this out. Barry begins running and punching everyone, stating that when they first showed up, he was holding back. But he won't stand still while his family is in danger. Cold grabs his gun, telling him, That's enough! Barry smacks it out of his hand, telling him, You're being manipulated. If you have any idea where Wally is, you're coming with me! Back at the Flash Museum, Hunter goes on telling him, I warned you about going back in time and changing it. When Barry went back to save his mother, he created the Flashpoint, and he nearly destroyed the world. Though Barry managed to put things back together, there are things missing. Before I became Zoom, I was selfish. I wanted to go back and fix my life, but now, this is bigger than going back in time. There are people trapped in the Speed Force. Wally turns away, telling him that he's just trying to trick him into cutting the connection that him and Barry have to the Speed Force. And Hunter shouts, asking, Your powers are more important than your children? The temporal energies in your body will allow you to enter the Speed Force at the right speed and break it. It'll be enough to save Ivory and Chai. Be the hero that we all know you are. Just then, Barry runs in with Commander Cold, stating that they never needed a reverse flash to tell them how to be heroes. Cold points his gun at Hunter, telling him, You're under arrest. And as he fires, Wally runs through yelling, No! And he deflects the shot, creating a blast, knocking Barry and Cold away. Seconds later, Wallace and Iris show up, and Wallace asks, Is that reverse flash? And Wally tells him, He used to call himself Zoom. He's from before Barry made a mess of things. Barry asks him, How could you defend someone in that costume? And Wally says, I know parts of my life have been taken away. Like my children. I had twins, Barry. Everyone begins to look around and Iris says that she remembers. She used to babysit them. Who else are they? But before Iris can ask her question, Cold grabs his gun, pointing at a hunter, stating that everyone is coming with me. The courts will sort this out. Hunter yells to Wally, telling him, You know that this is too big for them to understand. You have to break the speed force. Wally tells Barry that if he runs fast enough, he can re-enter the speed force and he can save them. And Barry asks, Are you really considering this? You are trapped there. Wally takes off running, telling him, I wasn't asking for your permission. But before Barry could follow, Cold checks his scanner state and then Wally just jumped into the time stream. There's no point in running. Barry tells Cold, If you want to redeem yourself, then take care of Iris and Wallace until I catch up. I know there's a cosmic treadmill in this museum. Cold begins pressing buttons on his wrist, stating, How about a shortcut? I have Wally's speed force signatures, so you should be able to get right to him. As Barry disappears, Hunter looks at Cold and tells him, Wally is finally on the right path to becoming the true Flash. And Cold tells him, You're not going anywhere. And Hunter tells him, You're here because I created the Renegades. And Cold tells him, Maybe it's time to go rogue then. Hunter grabs a shiny yellow hammer and slams it on the ground yelling, I hate rogues! And in a flash of light, he disappears. Suddenly, the alarms begin going off and Iris asks, What's that? And Cold says that it's a citywide siren. It's a temporal event. Everyone begins to head outside, and Cold goes on telling them, Whatever Hunter did, he changed the timeline in a major way. Time is beginning to erase itself. As the entire city around the three heroes begin to fade to white, Cold grabs Iris and Wallace, telling them, Don't worry. It may be too late for this, but everything is going to be okay. And as he says this, they fade into white. Meanwhile, in another time, Wally races towards Central City, thinking about the life that he had. And then Barry charges into him, sending the two of them flying down the road. Barry gets up, telling him, Hunter is lying! And Wally gets up and starts running, telling him, And what if he's not? Barry turns to grab Wally, telling him, Then we'll find another way! And Wally pushes Barry off of him, telling him, You should be helping me in this! And if you won't, I'll make sure that you never run again. Barry steps back, telling him, I don't want that! Look! Eobard murdered my mother and took my life away. Every day has been about making sure that no one else has to go through what I did, including you. I will not allow you to make the same mistakes that I once did. What if destroying the Speed Force has bigger consequences than losing our powers? And Wally yells, I don't care about the consequences! And Barry then says, If you run, I will catch you. And Wally asks, Do you remember what happened the first time that we raced? Two pause for a moment. And as the two generate more power, Wally takes off with Barry shouting, You have to stop! Seconds later, as Barry catches up to Wally, they tear through the world! With Amanda Waller watching the two pass, and she tells Steve Trevor, you might want to call in your friends. Tell them to clean up this mess before Task Force X is involved, because either way, the flashes must be stopped. Wally shouts, Hunter was right! My kids are trapped! There isn't another second that I'm going to stand around and do nothing! Soon the ground around Amanda Waller and Steve Trevor begins to rumble, and Amanda asks, Are they coming around again? And Steve tells her, No. You said to call on my friends, right? Superman and the rest of the Justice League begin to touch down with Diana asking, What is going on? You said the Flash was in danger? And Amanda tells him, No, the Flash is the danger. It appears that there are two Flashes and they're racing. It just might bring the end of the world that we're supposed to be protecting. Cyborg taps into the network and says, Waller's telling the truth for once. The energy that they're generating is playing havoc with every fabric of the multiverse. Superman kneels down, telling them, 
If there's even a slight chance that they can hurt someone, I'm gonna catch up and talk some sense into them. In a flash, Superman takes off, following close behind, calling out to Barry and Wally, telling them, you have to stop. However, to them, they're running too fast and they're so involved in their own argument that Superman's words don't even reach them. Back with everyone, there's a blue flash with Superman stopping, taking a deep breath, stating, I couldn't catch them, they're going too fast. Hal Jordan reports in telling everyone, hey, don't worry, if the blue couldn't get their attention, maybe green will. Roy then asks, wouldn't going that speed kill them if they hit the wall? And Hal says, being friends with Barry for this long means that I've been subjected to his flashbacks for years. I'm using all of my will to vibrate this construct at a frequency that if they run through it, it'll slow them down but not kill them. But as Wally runs through it, he plows through the construct, destroying it, forcing Barry to stop and save Hal. Barry tells him, I know you're trying to help, but it's too dangerous for any of you to be here. After setting him down, Hal reports that they nearly broke his ring. The energy that they are giving off demolished his construct. This is bad. Real bad, guys. Barry manages to catch up, shouting, What is wrong with you? Hal is our friend and you nearly killed him. He grabs Wally by the arm, throwing him into a building. But Wally lands feet first and continues running, telling them, I knew that you were going to be there to save him. Wally tells him, If you trust me, now's the time to show it, Barry. And Barry asks, What do you want me to do then? Wally tells him, we need to continue to race into the Speed Force, smashing through the other side. And Barry says, We have both have gotten lost in the Speed Force before, Wally. And Wally tells him, That's because we were alone. This time, we could stay grounded. We are each other's lightning rods, Barry. Just then, Wally begins to break through the Speed Force barrier, with Barry yelling, telling him, I can't keep up! Something is wrong! There's pain! Barry begins to fall back, shouting, Wait! But Wally calls out, telling him, You just have to believe! I can save my children! I have to! There's a loud crack -oom! And both Barry and Wally are thrown out of the Speed Force. Barry gets up stating, I still feel connected to the Speed Force, but something's wrong. And just then there's another loud boom with the Justice League landing and Diana shouting, What have you done? Barry asks, What is she talking about? And Aquaman tells him, Look into the sky! As the two look up, they see lightning storms covering everything and Barry says, I think we just broke the Speed Force. Wally then asks, but what about I, Ray, and Jai? Hunter said! But before he could finish, Barry and Wally hear the sounds of cracks as somebody is going through hitting all of the heroes. And a voice calls out to them. The voice tells them, You didn't free them. You didn't break the speed force. All you did was break the force barrier and unleash something else that was trapped long ago. Barry shouts to Hunter as he's holding Batman's unconscious body. And Hunter tells him, You always wanted to be like Barry, and now you can be. A selfish man who hurt the world. Wally asks, What are you talking about? And Hunter says, I needed you to break the Force barrier so that I could gain access to what was still inside of the Speed Force. Barry steps forward shouting, you lied! And he begins to create a whirlwind blast, but Hunter holds up Batman's body, letting him take the hit and being sent off across the city. Hunter yells, you did what a hero does. You took the risk. And yes, I do know where Wally's family really is. But I saw the dangers that are coming into our world and what you needed to be a true hero. Like a fool, I hoped it would have been Wally. Hunter holds up a ring, telling them, Eobard used to hang on to Barry's original Flash ring, hoping the same thing for him. As the ring opens up, a red costume comes out and Hunter tells them, No one understands tragedy like I do. My name is Hunter Solomon, and I am the Flash. I am much, much more than just the fastest man alive. You think that you know everything about the Speed Force, but that's just one of the forces out there. And now you have freed them all. Barry and Wally start rushing towards Hunter, but Hunter holds out his hand and the two stop. Hunter tells them, The history books call these forces the Sage Force and the Strength Force. Hunter telepathically lifts Barry and Wally into the air and then punches them back down, telling them, I saw how these would eventually make your lives a living hell, and I'm going to save you from that future and use these powers to kill both of you and finally bring back the life that was taken. As Hunter starts to take the two down, Wally jumps to his feet and takes Hunter away, asking, Where are my kids? Where did you hide them? And Hunter grabs Wally by the throat, telling him, No, that's not on me. You never understood, but Barry, Barry gets it. Barry knows how tragedy makes a hero. You practically lived the same life. A madman changed your lives forever, and destiny turns you into heroes. These events turned me into Zoom, but that was the path that I needed to run to join you as the new Flash. Together, both Barry and Wally yell that there's never going to be a time when he becomes the Flash, and Hunter punches Barry and mentally stops Wally, telling him, I'm stronger and smarter. You were always blind to the Speed Force, and look where that got you. We thought that these heroes were equals when we should have been your masters. It never crossed your minds what other forces would be out there. Now with the Flash family broken, it's time to fix the past, present, and future. 
As Hunter turns back and he begins to run, Wally helps Barry up, telling him that they need to hurry and follow Hunter before things get even worse. Meanwhile, back with the others floating in nothingness, Wallace asks, where are we? Are we dead? And Cole tells him, no. I was able to get us away from the time wave before it could get us. I just couldn't set coordinates. This must be the no when. Iris asks, what are they supposed to do? And Cole tells her, Kid Flash can run us back into the time stream. That way, we can get back home. Wallace says that he doesn't have a lightning rod like Barry or Wally, and Iris stops him, telling him, yeah, you do. You're a member of our family, and you know exactly who to run to when you're worried. You can do this. Now run, damn it! Wallace grabs a hold of Iris and Cole's arm, shouting, yes, ma'am! And he starts to run. Over with Hunter, he punches through into the time stream. And he looks back and he sees Barry and Wally and he laughs, telling them, <laughs> It looks like I've got some sidekicks. The two try to grab a hold of Hunter, but as Hunter dodges, he tells them, This is so much bigger than you. Thanks to you breaking the force barrier, I can cross the line into hyper time. Here I can pick and choose the reality that I want to be the hero that you need. All that's needed is the last force. As the realities begin to bend around everyone, Barry says that he must be talking about the still force. The Justice League just recently encountered it. It's a dark alternate current to the speed force. Wally yells, whatever it is, we can't let Hunter get a hold of it. What's worse is I've been in hyper time before and this doesn't look right. Barry says, it's gotta be dying because of the source wall breaking. That's why we need. But Wally stops as he sees images of Ivray and Jai stating, that's my kid's future. Barry calls out to him, but Hunter hits him, telling him, Wally is starting to understand. We can all get what we want. Hunter starts running through a reality where Wally has his family, and just as he begins to stop and look, Barry tells him, We have to keep going. The longer that we wait, the further that Hunter's going to get, and we will find them again. And Wally starts running, telling him, You're right. I know you're right. And that's when there's a loud crack, and as everyone stops, Wally asks, What is this? And Hunter says, don't you recognize the 25th century? You were just here, but your adventures erased it. Wally shouts, asking, where are Iris and Wallace? And Hunter attacks them, telling them, it doesn't matter. All is lost and found at my will. You could have had these powers if you weren't so weak, but you're unworthy of even fighting for it. Hunter grabs Wally by the neck, and as he grabs him, Wally's eyes begin to glow as another memory comes in, and he shouts, we used to be friends! As Wally remembers, Hunter is knocked away by the temporal energy, and he asks, what did you do? I need to get back into hyper time. Barry and Wally take off after him, and Barry asks, Did you see that? Your temporal seizure hurt Hunter. That could be the key to winning this whole thing. Wally asks him how, and Barry tells him, Whenever you think about something from your past, you have a burst of temporal energy, and that clashes with the Speed Force connection. Now that Hunter is connected to the Speed Force, temporal energy should hurt him. It might be possible to use that energy to expel him from hypertime. Wally asks what happens if he uses the temporal energy and he forgets his family again. And Barry shouts, You won't. You just have to embrace them. The past and legacy are important, and you can learn from them to help you move forward. Your connection to the people that you love, whether here or not, is your greatest gift. Wally then asks, how are we going to catch up to Hunter? And Barry asks, remember when you asked me about the first time that we raced? Of course I remembered. I was so lost in the science of the Speed Force that I missed out on just having fun and cutting loose. Wally West always enjoyed speed, and right now, you need to remember that Wally West is the fastest man alive! Wally begins to focus on his running, and slowly he begins to inch closer and closer to Hunter. And then he tells Hunter, this race is over. Hunter asks him, do you really think you can keep up with me? And he swings, except his arm goes through Wally. Wally laughs, asking, ha ha, as you like that, I want intangible from vibrating so much. That's something my daughter taught me. You've helped me remember everyone in my life and the people who made me. So for that, thank you for reminding me that I don't run through the Speed Force alone. Wally starts to concentrate and he lets out the temporal energy that he's been storing up with the memories of his family and unleashes it onto Hunter Zolomon. And as he does, there's a loud crack-a-cack-a-coom! And Barry finds himself back in Central City. He looks around asking where Wally and Hunter are and that's when there's a loud crack a boom And Wallace comes running out holding Iris and Colt. He gets up telling them that he didn't think he could go that fast. And Barry tells him, that was amazing! You found your way back! And Wallace stops him, stating that he found his way back because he let his anger guide him. As Wallace pushes Barry back, Barry asks him, what? And Wallace tells him, it's because we're supposed to be a family. And when we were in the future, you left me. Iris pulls Wallace away, stating it's okay. And Wallace tells her, no, it's not. We can't keep doing this. Cole checks his scanner and he asks Barry, what the hell did you do in there? The force barrier is a mess. The fact that I'm alive means the future must have been fixed. Hopefully. What's worse, there's no temporal energy, which means all speedsters are done. Forever! All access to hyper time is shut down, and I'm stuck here. Iris asks, what about Wally? And Cold looks at the scanner, stating, well, 
I'm not sure if it's him or not, but someone is connected to the Speed Force in this time period. Over at Mount Hood in Oregon, Wally starts to pick himself up from the snow, and Barry says, Let me help. Wally asks, Where is? And Barry tells him, They're at home, or at least in the correct time period. Wally says, No, Hunter. And Barry tells him he's not sure. Wally pushes Barry off, stating that they escaped. That means that Hunter escaped too. They need to find him. And Barry runs in, telling him, Stop! Can't we just talk for a second? Wally tells him, I've been angry at you for so long, and that's because you mean everything to me. It wasn't Linda or the kids who grounded me, it was Barry Allen. You pulled me out of the Speed Force, and I may be faster, but I could never outrun you. Hunter was right. I wanted him to be so badly, and I ended up making the same selfish mistakes as you. It was wrong of me to ask you to run with me after everything Eobard did to you. So right now, I need to go back to the future and find Hunter. Barry stops him. You can't. When you released your temporal energy, you cut off time travel. Wally steps back, asking, then... Hunter won. Barry then says, We may have lost, but right now, we need to stop running. Wally asks, What? Like you did after your mother's death? You stood still for years. You might have made your own mistakes, but I refuse to make yours again. We're not the same. And I'll never stop running, Barry. As Wally leaves, Barry stands there thinking about the things that have changed. He is not the fastest man alive anymore. After briefing the League on everything that had happened, everyone went their separate ways, with Wallace following Damian Wayne and Iris going out to find Wally. But even with the forest barrier being shattered, if there's one thing that he can learn from loss, it's that he will always find hope. Meanwhile, elsewhere, a young speedster comes through the street stating, I'm not sure if you heard me, Wally, but if not, who cares? The force barrier is down and the one and only Bart Allen is back. Back in the 25th century, the Renegades hurry over to Iron Heights Penitentiary, and Golden Guardian says that the reading show that there have been some massive changes. Whether Warlock asks what are they supposed to do, they are all that's left of the Renegades. And Golden Guardian shouts that they will deal with that later. Iron Heights is the greatest prison in the multiverse. Eobard built it after he caught its only inmate, if he ever escaped. But as the Renegades turn the corner, a bolt of lightning strikes them, fading them from existence, and a voice says, Finally. The Flashes will pay for what they have done. The metal doors fall over, revealing the name of the inmate, Crisis. And Crisis says, Worlds will live, worlds will die. The multiverse will never be the same. And that is the three hour video for the entire 1 through 50 issues of The Flash. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to know what happens next, subscribe to the channel because the storyline has kept going. We are literally on issue 80 right now, so I've got a lot more videos for you to find. The entire playlist will be down below, so after this is done, you can go ahead and click the next one on the playlist, and I'll give you that link. Otherwise, if you want to get more Flash, you want to get more Superman, Batman, more Spider-Man, Deadpool, subscribe to the channel, because if you subscribe to our channel and turn on that little bell for notifications, you'll know when we put out more videos. I hope you had a good time. We had a great time making this entire series for you, and thank you so much for your support by watching this entire video. We'll see you next time right here at Comic Story.